Hello friends! It is I, Winther! And today I'm bringing you D&D! <laughs> um, wow, okay, craziness. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, um, introduce you to the people that are going to um, <laughs> accompany me on, the, on this journey. Hey there, hi! Hi! Welcome to the stream, welcome! Alright, here we go. Bloop! <gasps> Hello there! Hello! Hi, Hi. friends! Hey. Hello? Oh, here we are! Wow! That, uh, that, um... Uh, that feeling when a new D&D campaign is, is beginning. Holy crap! Got that new campaign smell. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, D and D, huh? I'm Winther, uh, and I'm just gonna go like uh, in um, in order at the at our table positions, counterclockwise, starting from uh, from Dennis. Just to say your name and <laughs> whatever else you'd like to say. All right, I'm Dennis. And I'm about to play some D and D. Let's go. D and D hype. D and D hype. All right, Matt, you're next. Uh, that that's me. That's my name, Matt. I'm I'm ready to play. Let's let's do the thing. Let's let's drag in some dungeons. <laughs> Don't be nervous, guys. Ah! That's fine. <laughs> this is my normal voice. Austin. Hey hey, my name's Austin. Let's have some fun. And Jason? <laughs> I'm Jason. I'm the cool one. And I'm here to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Let's go! Home team, let's go! <laughs> Woo! Hey. And finally, Sid. Hey, I'm Sid. I'm not the mystic one. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, man. So, for, for context, um, I started playing D&D. Uh, like my my first main proper and full campaign start to finish it was with uh, uh, mostly this group uh, it started out with me Dennis Austin and Jason and I was DMing and I had no idea what I was doing uh, and that started me down a path of addiction that I have yet to recover from us too and now we're here years later, and none of us still know what we're doing, so it's all good. <laughs> uh, at the end of my campaign, uh, Austin DM'd for us, and that's when Sid joined in. And that was a whole other roller coaster of emotions. And at the end of that, I'm back on this side of the DM screen, and we have yet another new face with us. It's Matt joining us. Hello, hello, Yay. the new guy. Hopefully um, I don't ruin everything. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure if we were supposed to say things like, hey, welcome. I mean, we already said that. <laughs> clap, clap. We're not, we're not giving him the cold shoulder. Clap for me. <laughs> clap for me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded great, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah it was uh, excellent. Whew. So I am very nervous. I think we all are. Um, this is the first time the, the other two campaigns were not live stream they were not recorded so i know i'm adding like this extra pressure on you guys and uh, i hope it works out but the, the the main objective of us meeting up every sunday for for the next of uh, the two years uh is to have fun so we'll see how that goes it's not going to start out perfect we have a whole bunch of new tools here on tabletop simulator and some of them are not gonna work some of them are gonna turn out to be clunky um and it, We'll smooth things out as we go, because it's impossible. Uh, I have to accept. I hate it, but I can't get everything perfect at the beginning. So we're going to go with the flow, see what happens. And I um, I hope I can do uh, my very best for you guys, because you are amazing. You're just the best. Oh. No, you're breathtaking. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, there's this path ahead of me right now, and it's the story that I have 
some idea of where it will go and some idea of the twists and turns that it will take but uh, um, for the most part it is just a leap into I I don't know I, I don't know what it's going to be I don't know how this is going to work but um, I know that it will because we'll be doing it together don't oh. stress too much. I promise I will single-handedly grab the reins of this thing and run us all off the path and straight off a cliff. <laughs> like the last two times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh, I forgot that it's kind of true. Isn't it? Oh, crap. <laughs> Can we do three for three? Hell yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um... Oh, I suppose uh, that uh, the time has come to um, to begin, huh? Yeah, let's Intro do it. Time. All right. <laughs> this is the Brit <laughs> Mod Dungeons and Dragons stream. <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, we cut to the theme song, right? Yeah, <laughs> like the actual. <laughs> we were in the we we're on break, right? Like, Budget was a little low. Um, I did not get some animated uh, uh, stuff to go. <laughs> uh, but perhaps once we reach uh, uh, a million the, the f followers and subscribers, uh, um, we'll <laughs> we'll consider it. Womp. Um, thank you for the follow. I actually I didn't realize that I had the sound on for that. Uh, I guess we'll roll with it because I don't. <laughs> It's part of the world now. <laughs> it sure is. There is a little pixie just flew by and uh, sprinkled fairy dust on all of us. <clears throat> and someone steps on it. No. Oh. You're not allowed to. Um, you're not allowed to reference previous campaigns. Matt doesn't know them. Dang it. <laughs> no, nothing. I'm playing the low int character IRL. <laughs> All right, um, I suppose without further ado, um, let us begin. I'm going to drag a bunch of stuff on this table. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, we call our universe the Sea of Chaos. This infinite space that surrounds us in every direction, north and south, east and west, and even above and below us, is filled with clusters of the raw elements of the world. Fire, air, water, and earth. Think of these elemental planes as enormous bubbles of different shapes and sizes, countless of them, all clumped together in a formless mass, each shifting and spinning and revolving. Or, um, if it helps, think of an infinite box full of marbles. Imagine boiling waters bordering a sea of ever-burning flames, each side undisturbed despite the proximity. Imagine a sky of dirt and rock above your head, and a bottomless, windswept void beneath your feet. Matter without order nor logic. Lifeless, uninhabitable landscapes. But sometimes, when conditions are just right, these elemental planes overlap, creating something new in between. When fire meets earth, you'll find oceans of magma. Where air meets water, clouds can form and where four different elemental planes meet together in a perfect and harmonious balance well that's our home it's our land our continent the world we call plurna it's at this intersection where the building blocks of the universe all come together that life can exist and prosper of course, most people don't really think about the Sea of Chaos that much. What happens in the skies around us doesn't really affect our daily lives. And instead, we concern ourselves with far different things. Lorna has existed for thousands of years, and it has seen so much. Eras of peace and war, countries rising and falling, cultures fading in and out of existence. And at the center of it all, in the middle of the continent and at the heart of its history, stands our goddess, Vakanath. The enormous tree that holds our world together. 
Our roots steady the ground and our branches hold up the sky, preventing our intersecting planes from shifting out of balance and undoing all of Plurna. This is the world that we know. The only one we've ever known. The only history we've ever chronicled. At least until the halfling explorer Jamuel Fleetfoot made history. He commissioned a ship that could sail not only across waters, but also beneath the sea and above the clouds, and charted a course uh, across the many elemental planes, the treacherous ones, further than anyone had ever gone before them, until they found it. Another place where four elemental planes intersect and create a livable land. Another continent full of new plants, new animals, and new people. A mysterious uncharted land full of secrets and dangers and adventures to be had. Jamuel named it Lidaria and returned home to share the news. 32 years later, the people of Plurna are now busy exploring a new continent, building settlements along its southern shores and learning to exist peacefully with its inhabitants. But if the history of the old world is any indication of the future, well, it simply won't be that easy. The story takes place on that land. This is the Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. That was so good! <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was so good! So when can we play? A little bit. Uh, as soon as I clear the table. There we go. We, we get to play at this session? Uh, yeah, I guess Welcome so, to our you... session zero, everybody. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it that way. That makes it sound less uh, stressful. Oh, Cappy, thank you for the bits. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, the hey, bits. I have, um... I have, a. Uh... Oop! <laughs> Ta-da! Title oh, screen! Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Title drop. Yeah, just, just making it official. <laughs> now, now the intro plays. <laughs> this is where we have, uh, this where we have Austin beatboxing it. <laughs> I, I cannot do Austin that. Austin and Jason <laughs> duo beatbox. <laughs> Thank you. That's I didn't totally have, the, I didn't totally have to... Going for, right? Yeah, that's I'm a move. I'm literally gonna crop that from the stream VOD and turn that into an opening. <laughs> <laughs> Our opening is like three seconds long of <laughs> Jason beatboxing and then <laughs> splash screen and then we're good. <clears throat> so... Today's date is Malel 14th, 1153. The first of Ladarius moons is full, while the second, bigger one, is mostly uh, shadowed by its sister. They are both still visible in the sky as the sun rises. Two figures sit at a safe distance away from a sharp cliff, far away from any road, huddled around a campfire. They share breakfast while waiting for the moons to set and for the tide to fall at its lowest point. Talix and Pontifex. Which one of you would like to describe himself first? Be I'll pick otherwise. Okay. Okay, I'll go. I will Val and tell you to go first. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Talix is... Um, first glance, he just appears to be... a. Uh, Fairly normal man, about uh, a little north of six feet tall, unremarkable build. A bit on the slender side, you know, small frame. Uh, he's dressed for the wilderness. He's wearing rugged, loose-fitting clothes that have seen plenty of use, already visibly faded, tattered, and dirty. Uh, he has an oversized walking stick in one hand and a crude shield of made of banded planks strapped to an overstuffed backpack. At his belt, uh, there hangs a scuffed leather canteen at one hip, and a burlap pouch at the other. At his neck hangs an unusually large amulet that looks rather plain, like a dull metal egg that's suspended by an ordinary rope. And completing the outdoorsy ensemble are a pair of leatherless, fingerless gloves and a straw hat. Uh, he's somewhat dark complexion, uh, especially on the exposed parts of his arms. He's seen a lot of sun. There's also kind of unusual copper tinge, and if you get close enough to see his face clearly, you'll see that there's uncommonly narrow features, namely the nose and chin, and he has elongated ears. 
I'd almost managed to hide under the brim of his hat. His yellow brown eyes, short charcoal hair, and the subtle presence of stubble upon his chin and lip. Seemingly the extent of what he can grow, uh, though he doesn't appear to be that young. If you were familiar with human aging, you might peg him late 20s. Uh, probably as most surprisingly, given his outwardly dirty appearance, if you get close enough, you'll notice a sort of pleasant floral scent that precedes him. Not that any of you know that yet. Antifex okay, would I'm done. know that. <laughs> <laughs> I would know that. I can probably you smell you across the way. Yeah, um, it gets kind of strong up close. <laughs> is uh, is that my cue? Yep, it is. Um, so I am playing as Pontifex Vosdalus Alinuk. Um, he is a bit of an oddity in this world, um, being a Vidalcan. Um, they're extremely uncommon, uh, and any ones that you would have seen before would have been uh, in his home country of Nazridora. Uh, he's, uh, he's a historian, uh, he's a theologist, and he's an established scribe in his venerable years, and he spent his entire life in the pursuit of knowledge and answers for his faith. Um, he is, I believe, by far the oldest person here. Um, he has lived through the major significant uh, historical things that have happened over the years um, in his almost 400 years of life. Uh, and here we go. Um, his, uh, he's got like a smooth skin that seems to kind of stretch tightly over his frame. Um, he's very tall. He's a little bit hunched over. Um, but his, his kind of his eyes and his struggled movements uh, kind of give away his age. Um, he's got like wide, flat features and a broad nose with wide set eyes and a square jaw. Um, if he were to ever pull back his hood, you would see that he doesn't have external ears, um, but just two holes on either side of its head. Um, and his hands are, are worn and callous from centuries of turning pages and snuffing out candle wicks. Um, Otherwise, he's entirely um, concealed beneath his clothing. Um, he's uh, it consists of like rich blues and silver and brass metallic inlays and plating all over it. Um, and every piece of clothing and armor is adorned with like elegant filigree um, down to his very fancy boots. Uh, he carries a staff um, made out of like silver and brass that's topped with a with a big clouded diamond that's been contaminated with some kind of black mineral like onyx or something. Um, and he's often seen carrying around a golden colored spherical object um, that looks like some combination of like an astrolabe, a compass, a globe, or like a decoder, um, just covered in weird runes. I think that's it. Cool. I think at this point, I, I'm not sure if there's something. I think at this point, Talos would be kind of looking away from the fire. Uh, Stuffing bread into his face and just kind of saying, "Do you think this will be the one?" Well, we Both can only hope. Lead. Even if this is not uh, every experience in life is merely a step towards enlightenment. Don't, don't view these as setbacks. View them as opportunities. Yeah, but oh, we're running, running for a shot of colonies here. We've run the gamut. No one seems to know a thing. That just means we have more chances to keep looking, to keep learning. Well, I just like shove the rest of the bread in, of the bread in my mouth and just <laughs> uh, start to ruffle through my backpack a little bit. I look over and see if my companion Pontifex is about done with his meal. Uh, yeah, I think. Um... I think looking down, you can already see his little his little mess kit tray has already been cleaned. Um, Pontifex is a very efficient eater, we will call it. Um, <laughs> Same with Alex. Yeah, so uh, I think I we put away our meal dishes. All right. with haste. So I turn back to face you a bit more directly and... Uh, well... Will? This will be the one, right? Positive thinking and all that. Exactly. This could always be the one. Or if it's not, then it could be the next one. I can deal with that. Now, right. um, Talix and Pontifex, there is a rope 
dangling down the cliff that you found the previous night, and it's firmly tied to a strong tree. Uh, neither of you were the ones who left it there. This rope is the last clue of the whereabouts of Jamiel Fleetfoot, the, fam ex the famous explorer who first discovered Ladaria, the person you are currently looking for. According to the notes you found, there should be a cave entrance on the side of this very cliff, right under this rope, which uh, um, can only be accessed once every three months when a tide is at its absolute lowest point. Like you said, you're hoping that uh, in a cave you'll find some other clue as to where Daniel went after this. Meanwhile, uh, right around this time, someone behind you, unbeknownst to you, three figures emerge from the morning mist. <gasps> Brooke, Pip, and Tekka. At the furthest edge of your vision, you spot two men where your trail ends, and uh, neither of them looks like the halfling you're looking for. Which one of you three would like to describe himself first? I can go ahead. All right. Um, Brooke. Brooke is a uh, seven feet five tall furbolk with ginger fur, which on his hair covers, which on his head obviously covers the hair, eyebrows, sides of the ear, and is even trimmed to a chin goatee. He is very pale and has gray eyes. His hair is braided into dreads, and when not carefully tied together to a top knot, it would probably reach right under his scapula. He always wears a red handkerchief around his neck, knotted to his right side. He also wears a black shirt with a purple one vest above it. He is pretty built. His body looks like it has been trained for a very long time. The nature of the Fredrick body, which is tall and wide, obviously helps the look. So all in all, it's a very sporty and defined muscular look. He always wears long black leather gloves that reach just under the elbow. At the end of the gloves and right where the hand ends, the gloves have red leather straps that are connected with white cloths that are different parts have dried bloodstains. Mm. Besides this, he has brown pants, and the only other things he would notice are shield, rounded at the top, pointy at the bottom, black metal outlines, and the middle of it is colored red at the top, going into a purple, so further it goes down. He also wears a huge sword, which is sheathed away under the shield on the back. What you can see about the sword is that the grip is being red, and the guard is being black, but you can't see the blade yet. Wonderful. Um, Sid and Austin? Which uh, one is going first? I can go next. All right. So what we notice first about Tekka are stocky, sand-colored antlers at about an average humanoid's eye level. When you follow those antlers, your eyes will meet thick brown locks with aqua fades, framing a stalwart expression with locked gray pupils. His skin is of a faded and dark piketty blue with gray markings across his eyes and his, thro and his throat. Uh, his ears are wide and tall with three hair streaks reaching from for the sky, kind of like a lynx. And they are pierced with yellow tinted cube earrings. His nose is wide, eyebrows thick, and with dark and jagged, what you think are almost bone or stones, adorning his jawline. His physical frame is slim and gaunt, but the way he's holding himself is kind of imposing, but also dignified. His shoulders are wide and his arms are usually crossed when standing still, like he is now. He wears a yellow padded shoulder vest with blue shorts and gray sandals, wearing a large backpack and a shoulder bag, both in this faded brown fabric. Uh, connected to his waist belt, you see this construction of metal pipes and wires 
And as he unfurls it, you can see it's a collapsible quarterstaff. And as he shifts his posture, you see a fur tail in a similar color to his skin with an aqua fade on the tip, similar to his hair. You would guess he's, you know, around mid-twenties and about five feet tall. He doesn't look like it because the mini is right next to Brooks, <laughs> who is enormous. <laughs> I just love seeing them side by side. And now we're about to also add Pip to the mix. So, Austin. All right. Uh, Pip is a small, waif-like human with espresso skin and is very young. Uh, appears to be in his preteen years. Above his dirty, calloused feet, he wears pale and weathered pants that seem a little too baggy for him and are held close to his legs by black bands of cloth. His torso is covered with a long sleeve black linen shirt and a brown vest, and worn thickly around his neck is a green shawl, so large on him that it comes up over his chin. His dark brown hair extends down to the base of his neck and is tied into messy dreads, uh, or dreads stranded with beads, bits of carved bone, and other various tiny trinkets like a small door key, a cabinet knob, and a canine fang. His tangled hair frames a smooth, boyish face, where a plump nose sits delicately between his vibrantly green eyes. His right ear is pierced in the helix area with a green metal that matches an iron ring tightly bound around his left index finger. He has a mulberry-colored jacket tied around his waist like a belt and carries a small leather drawstring sack at his hip. And never too far from his chest is a pale, featureless, white cloth doll that seems rather ratty. And uh, I guess on his shoulder right now, sort of scurrying up out of the folds of his cloth and looking towards the uh, two figures up ahead, there is a small black rat. Sort of squeaks in Pip's ear. Okay. Uh, wow, thank you for all that. Like, all of you. <laughs> I love the effort you put into this. We're prepared. <laughs> We're so ready. You are. <laughs> so, um... We prepared writing. We prepare our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. Yes, you have. Okay. Uh, Brooke, Tekka, and, uh, uh Pip. Uh, like I mentioned, you see two figures in the distance that are not the people you're looking for. And for the time being, you're... Since you're kind of uh, coming from... Uh, from the back compared to them, um, you're the first ones to notice them. Um, this is this should be about the spot where uh, you were last told to come uh, by the latest critter you asked. What would you like to do? Mm, well, um, probably for context, the three of you came from Alford. You followed the river for a while, and you traveled east until you found a cliff. Uh, the other two, Talix and Pontifex, you came from the south, from Cleon. And similarly, you followed the road for a while until you went straight east to find the, uh, the cliff, and you followed that until you found that, ro that rope. Are they on the other side of a river right now? Um, no, this is like a big map. Um, okay. So there is no water in between, I'm just... Pip immediately like stops in his tracks and um, just sort of recedes back into himself and and looks to the other two for what they're going to do. Brock would, Brock would probably turn to the other two and say, "Hmm, weird. Other people in the exact same area." All right, I guess it doesn't hurt approaching them. Just be careful. The figure in the straw hat is completely unaware of you right now. I'm, <laughs> Talix is just uh, totally fixated on the rope, like testing it, pulling it as hard as he can, like rocking back and forth. Talix, yeah, sits... I think it'll hold. 
The rope is a little weathered. Uh, it seems to have been left here for a long while. Um, so it's been exposed to sunlight and rain, but it is a... It's... <laughs> I don't know how many ropes you've seen in your life, but this has to be the most expensive oh, and best quality one. one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is like fancy equipment. Well, if this was where he went, he, uh, he seemed to be at least well equipped. This is the best clue we've had so far. Although, if you want to be a bit safer, I do have something with me that we could try. I, I'm always curious how well I, prepared you are. I'll shrug off my backpack and start rooting around. Morning! Oh! Oh! <gasps> Hello! Oh my I'll text to have company. I, I run up to take a <laughs> not knowing your name yet. Oh my goodness. I've I'm gonna try speaking in uh Atarian. Okay. I've 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 never seen your I've never seen a person like you before. What what are your people called? I'm sorry, uh it's nice to meet you. I if you ask my name, Tekka. And you reply back in uh, Plurinan, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I... Talk to Incredible, come meet these people. It seems your Hello. linguistic thing is uh, needed. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hello. What brings you three out here so far? Uh, oh. uh, quickly. <laughs> Uh, Talix and Pontifex, have we already gone over... I don't think we have. Um, I will need you to do a roll to see w if you have any idea of what kind of creature you're looking at in terms of uh, uh, Tekka. Can I voluntarily fail? Yes. Yes, you I, can. Yeah, I was going to say, well, I guess there's a chance. Uh, I don't know how common it is, but uh, what, what kind of check? History or... Yes. History or nature or something. Um, in this case, it's, it is going to be a history because of, oh, hey, first world mm -hmm. campaign. Um, because this is yeah. about something that you would have had to hear about. Uh, um, and specifically, um, or mostly, in, in the colonies. And uh, it's not a difficult of a check. It's not that uh, uh, rare of a knowledge. Uh, you wouldn't have seen someone like him before but you would have you would have heard you would have heard the stories of what happens when a person who comes from Plurina, the old continent and a person who comes from Ladaria, the new continent have a child together you've heard the, the stories of how something seems to uh, twist their appearance and they're born with horns tails sometimes even hooves and uh, um, most of them are don't make it too far in life. This is a tiefling. Forget everything you guys know as players about tieflings. This is new. Um, there is no such thing as tieflings in the normal D&D sense. Um, it's just what I just told you. Uh, proceed from here. I think, Dennis, I interrupted you. Uh, I have forgotten what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say, when that realization hits me, uh, like, I kind of just let my jaw drop, and then I, like, just start biting my fingers, like, oh, like, almost feeling like maybe I should apologize or something. Um, wait, can I, can I, I go to back to my backpack. Like, run back to the tree to get something out. Uh, can I sketch you? Excuse my friend here. He's uh, very interested in all of these things in this new wonderful place. Uh, these things he's never seen before is a rarity, and he loves to catalog them as such. He means no disrespect. <sighs> if you tell us your purpose, then yes. <laughs> He'll like look back to Talix. 
Yeah. I just call from the tree. What was that? I didn't hear you. And I, I uh, run back over with my book real quick. A couple and of start feet. Through pages. A couple of feet, sort of behind Tekka, and just sort of peering out from the side. Um, Talix, you just see this little boy just glaring at you. You look a little young to be so far out here. And then uh, the eyes dart to Pontifex. Just the glaring continues. He gives a uh, a very cheery smile. Hello. I just kind of wave nervously, noticing it for the first time. Pip um, just sort of backs away and, and moves a bit closer to Brooke. Well, my friend here said, if you tell us your purpose, you may sketch him? Uh, purpose? Um... Oh, uh, well, we're... Sorry, we're here looking for someone. Uh, we heard some rumors. But, uh... Well, there might be something under this cliff, actually, we were going to look at. Anyone? Any chance... Could... Yeah, any Can... chance any of you have heard of uh, Jamiel Fleetfoot? <laughs> heard of him? Of course, who hasn't heard of him? Uh, Everyone knows his name. Right, right, of course. Sorry, I... Uh, Tekka I'm leaps forward when you say Fleetfoot. F Fleetfoot? What do you know? Well... Not a whole lot, honestly. I, we've just been following hearsay all the way here. This is just the latest one. But we did find something on that tree. Maybe this is promising, you think? Seems to be a fairly good lead. It's uh, a rope descending. I believe this may be a clue of uh, his latest whereabouts. The quality of the rope is too fine to just be a, any typical adventurer. This is someone who came out here with a purpose. Hmm. Uh, sorry, if it is rude, uh, I believe the introductions are in order. Uh, my name is Pontifex Vastalus Alenach. Um, if you're from Plunar, you may have heard of me from the universities of Nazaradora. And he'll give like a little curt bow. You can just call him Professor, Professor Pontifex. All right. My name is Baruch. Baruch Hayatep. Brooke. Nice to meet you. I'll, I'll extend close. my hand. He waits for a second and then very firmly grabs it and starts shaking. Oh my. Uh, Talix, Talix Moyer. I'm, not, I'm no one really. I'm mostly his protege, but... Uh, well, I'm also here on behalf of the, uh, the Jade Temple. I guess that's why I'm really here. That's my purpose, if you ask. So Jay Temple is interested in finding Fleetfoot. Hmm. Well, of course. Who You're isn't? Right. Who isn't? I look at Tekka. Are you alright here while he sketches you, if he wants to do it now? I would like to check out that rope. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, what are you trying to uh, to clean for it, from it? Um, first of all, I would probably motion Pip to come with. Pip comes with you. I would first check, um, just probably the same things I checked as well, like how old the rope is, when was it potentially uh, put on the tree there. Just any hints to know, like, how long... General Fleetfoot, if he actually was here, could have put his robe on uh, the tree. Okay, that will be an investigation check. At the same time, Pip will be looking out to see if there's any sort of bird in the area that may be nesting nearby. For that, will, that will be perception. Okay, Brooke, um, 
checking the rope, uh, you notice like Talix, that this is a very sturdy ro rope, and it's, despite having been out here for a while, um, which you, you guess, it has been a few months uh, since it, this rope has been uh, uh, possibly abandoned, uh, but it is sturdy enough that it could easily even hold your weight. Um, there isn't a lot more to it, although as you wiggle it around a little bit, you notice there is uh, um, the lower edge of the rope, the, the final bit that is uh, uh, many feet beneath you on the edge of the cliff, uh, seems to curve inward and uh, be attached to something. So you don't really see like where the rope ends. Because it goes into some kind of uh, uh, hole into the cliff. The tide, by the way, at this point, uh, uh, seems to be uh, all the way down. You can see the waters being about uh, um, nearly at the point where that rope disappears. Just a few feet beneath. Alright. Could I gently pull the rope? Yeah, uh, you feel some resistance, but it's not too much. You, you pull gently, and uh, uh, it comes off on the side of the cliff, along with the, the uh, what it was attached to, which seems to be to some kind of large contraption. Um, or not really contraption, it's more like a series of straps. But it, from a distance, it's hard to tell what it's even for. But now the rope is... Uh, freely dangling beneath you, uh, only attached from the tree behind you. Uh, as for Pip, uh, this close to the to the cliff, there aren't that many trees. There's one that the rope is dangling from and a few uh, further off into the distance, but it does appear that this particular tree is home um, to a nest. That it, uh, from, from the ground, though, we currently don't hear any chirping. All right. Well, I was hoping you could do your thing, but take Pipple your time. Sort of, Pip will sort of glance up in that direction where the tree is, where he can just sort of spy the nest through a couple of branches, and we'll just sort of give a, a little bit of a call, saying, hello, is anyone there? Uh, a small yellow bird head pops up from uh, from uh, behind the nest and whistles back. Uh, the answer being, I'm on. Continuing the same sort of trill chirping, Pip continues to speak with this bird. Hi, have you seen anyone come through here in a while? The bird whistles back. Not in a while, not in a while. Did anyone go down this cliff? Yes. Thank you. Want some seed? The uh, bird flies down from the nest and onto the lowest branch of the tree, which is uh, um, just close enough for you, where if you were to hold out your hand, you would be able to touch it. Pip sort of reaches down into his satchel um, and grabs out a few seeds that he had collected for occasions like this and just hands it out to the bird. Uh, the bird stays on the branch but manages to, just by leaning forward, uh, it's just close enough where it can pack at the seeds. Um, oh wow, your passive perceptions are like nearly identical across the board uh, for, <laughs> for the entire party, that never happens! Um, yeah, I, was, in, I was wondering if I noticed this. Um, so yeah. That is going Wonder to be I everybody hearing the this. whistling. Um, so if, uh, and then followed by the chirping, you're all kind of close-ish to this, to this tree. Um, so for anyone who would like to turn their heads at this, if they find the call of the bird uh, at all interesting, they would see indeed that uh, Pip is currently feeding a bird that is uh, perched uh, on one of the branches. Uh, Telex, it seems like this young one has something in common with you. I have drawn, like, two lines into this sketch, and I look over and see that, and I drop the book. <laughs> <laughs> and I run over. 
Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is extraordinary. If you run Excuse over... Me, little one. Uh... <laughs> Pip immediately backs far away from you as the bird just flies away. <laughs> <laughs> little one, do you... Do you know Vakanath? Uh, Pip's heard that name, right? Yeah. Yeah. He scowls at you. I just kind of, like, kind of gives me a start. I can reel back a little bit. And well, nods. So, hang on, I'm... One second. I run back to my backpack, <laughs> which is now sitting over by uh, my take -out. And I pull out, like, look around, look around, look around, and pull out this, uh, this scarf-looking thing. I can't think of the proper name for it. That is uh, green with 14 golden symbols of all of the different... All of the different symbols of the pantheon of uh, Vakanoth. And I run back over. I... No, I, I'm, I'm a friend. Don't worry. I'm, I'm a follower as well. Pip and I just, try to like give him a smile. Pip just looks so confused and looks back up to Brooke for any sort of help. Brooke sees the confusion, kind of shrugs like, huh? <laughs> And then takes a look at the book you said, or was it a scroll? Oh it's no, a it's a scarf. A scarf. Oh, yeah. oh a scarf. Sorry. So, yeah, it's a cloth that goes over the I cloth. The <laughs> um, looks at it. I can see the pantheons on there, right? Uh, Talix does there... it have symbols. Does it have names? Uh, it's just the yeah, just symbols for each of the. Of the 14 gods. Okay. One hmm. for each god in the pantheon. And Pip looks at it a, a little closer. Is there a... And and he just sort of slowly points to the snake. And so there's some recognition there. Oh, all right. Oh. Isn't that what I was expecting? Um, and the rest of you seeing this scarf with those uh, the symbols on it, you guys would notice a uh, an amulet hanging from Pontifex's necklace that is corresponding to one of those symbols, uh, and it is the symbol of the goat. He is uh, he's wearing a divine amulet with with that specific deity's like marker on it. And Talix is wearing one that's egg shaped. Yeah, it doesn't look like a holy symbol. It looks like something else. It looks very boring, actually. Like just a big hunk of metal. Uh, Talix, you fear you feel a pat on your shoulder. I turn. <laughs> no. Tekka is standing right in front of you, holding your sketchbook that you dropped. Oh, and he, uh, and he says, "It seems around a flowering tree there are many insects." Wow. Uh, okay. I just kind of like ponder that for a second. Wait, I, I don't understand. Are, are you calling me an insect? Seems we have a poet. You will find your own meaning. I don't really mind. Insects are interesting. Here, let me show you. I... I go through the different pages of my book and start showing him some uh, some dead insects that are pinned to the pages and wings and whatnot. But also some sketches. Ooh, I don't know if that it. holds his interest or very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would squat down to Pip while they're trying to show insects. <laughs> um, Pip, did say... Did the bird say something? He nods, yes. So, we should go down there? He he shrugs and gives a little slight nod. Alright, good job. Wait, are are you all going to see Jamiel? 
Are you well, for the same reason we are? I have indeed been looking for Jamuel. You're right. So if he's down there, I will at least go for it. You're welcome to come with. Professor. Yes? Oh, you, you get off at Professor, Jason. Oh, Professor, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, very convenient. It's uh, beginning to have some worries with just the two of us. Things can, you know, not always go as planned, and there's safety in numbers. And these people seem just as inquisitive as we are. And, uh, I see no harm in accompanying them. And strong. I look at the big <laughs> This is one of great stature. He's like over seven feet tall, right? Yeah, seven feet five. <laughs> so we have a very tall one and a very uh, small one. And he'll look down the pip and he'll hold out his hand. I uh, didn't get your name. Pip looks askance a little bit and then um, reaches up to his hair where um, there is a six-sided die that's uh, tied into his dreads and he holds it out to you uh, with the one facing you, the Pip. Uh, you know, maybe this will be a little easier. Uh, and he'll like turn to, uh, it's Brooke, I'm assuming that he's next to does, does he have a difficulty speaking? I can accommodate, of course. He will speak when he feels like it. I've heard him speak quite well. Well, uh, uh, in case you didn't, little... in Listen, case you ahead. didn't catch his name, it's Pip. Ah. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. That's very creative. I like that. Uh, here, let's just dig a little bit more. Uh, and Pontifex is going to, like, uh, shift his grip um, down the staff that he's carrying that's made of, like, different metals down to, like, a coppery bit of it. Um, and when his hand kind of comes into contact with the copper, uh, the copper portion, he's going to cast Detect Thoughts. <laughs> oh, <crap>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this first bit doesn't have a save or anything. Um, it is, uh, I learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what is most on its mind in that moment. Uh, and he is focusing it on Pip. Hmm. Uh, does, uh, I don't know where you're like getting text thoughts from. Does that uh, still use uh, um, a components slot? like verbal and somatic? Uh, it does. It, uh, it uses verbal, somatic, and material. The material is a copper piece, yeah. which he's he's kind of using a bit of the... Yeah, yeah it's, it's obvious mm -hmm. that he's casting a spell. He probably, okay. like, you know, mutters out some stuff in Draconic, and... Uh, but he seems cheerful the whole time, and he seems like he's not even being cautious about doing this. He's just kind of casting it in your face. If you start muttering some arcane words, and it's obvious enough that it's some sort of casting... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's very it. obvious. All right. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Uh, just facilitating conversation. Uh, uh, I don't yes, think sir. really... That's how you do conversations. People talk when they feel the need to talk. Oh, no, of course, I would never pry any deeper. Uh -huh. It would be rude. This is just... Uh, I am able to hear what he wants me to hear. Pip, what I are mean... your surface thoughts? Uh, oh boy. <laughs> this is the part that does not require a save, so I, yeah. this is things where, uh, like, you can be hiding things and them not come through. These are just surface thoughts that you're not trying to hide. Uh, I would say uh, immediately on, on Pip's mind is, is this sort of general concern um, for his own well-being, and also he's he's uh, very freaked out by you, and I think that would be a, an ever-present thought on his mind at the moment. Just sort sure. of like a, what is this guy doing? Please stop. I think uh, oh, I think then you hear in your head um, Pontifex's voice. Uh, one second. I'm just there. Yeah, here like... we go. This is wonderful. Uh, sorry, I have a gimmick. I think this is kind of cool. Um, you hear inside of your head, it's very clearly in your head, um, the voice of Pontifex echoing through saying, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I had uh, no intentions to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> and then, uh, it zooms out and uh, he ceases concentrating on the detect thought spell. I seem to have uh, upset you a little bit. I apologize. It was have no intention of harm. Pip is at the moment gripping this doll tight to his chest. Uh, fingernails sort of like bending inwards into it as Pip gives you just this this terrible glare. And this rat on Pip's shoulder does the same thing. <laughs> it seems I have offended more than one. Yeah, I would say no more spells on each other unless you're looking for trouble. Oh, no, I uh, apologize for my... I, I've been in Alien Northern for too long. Uh, it is... We're... We're more. so sorry. We didn't mean to. Uh, we, yeah, we don't. It's been a while since we've been in social situations. We don't on the road together for so long. P Professor, he doesn't mean any harm. I, I promise. Huh. Well, <sighs> so we want to go down. Are you going to finish your sketch? Are uh, we supposed to wait? Um, this is the moment that Alex and Pontifex say you were waiting for, uh, when the tile should be at its absolute, at its absolute lowest. I look up at the shifting, crazy marble sky, do I, can I tell that it's, <laughs> like, prime time? <laughs> yes. Okay. Ah, uh, I think we might have to get to it later. My apologies. Um... If we're gonna go, we need to go. And you're joining us then, the three of you. Well, I am. Go. Oh, I look at Pip. Are you coming? Uh, Pip sort of steps slowly over to the cliffside and looks down at the rope, and you can tell that he immediately gets very uncomfortable. Ah, that's okay. Worry. Dig, 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 dig. I procure a climber's kit, which includes a harness of all things. You can strap yourself to a rope and descend much more safely. Here, you can uh, you can put this on. We'll strap you in, and you won't have any chance of falling. And Pip reaches out his hand and 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 looks at it. Sort of moves his hand over it and inspects it closely. Um, does Pip trust what Talix is saying about this? Are you going to make an inside check? <laughs> May I? <laughs> yeah. What do um, I need to roll? I, actually, um, I think I know what I need to roll. Don't need to spoil it. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> when when these kind of rolls are, are between players, also I will not be me. <laughs> <laughs> We're amazing. <laughs> when those kinds of checks are happening between players, I will not even be mediating them. So it's up to you to like regulate what you think would be appropriate. I think we both had a hard time <laughs> communicating. <laughs> um, I'm just like um, they're like vigorously shaking the thing in front of you, like take it, take it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Pip is very. I, I, at least as you can see, like you understand the purpose of this thing or the strap, and you can see that uh, Talix is also like per, uh, proceeding to uh, tighten them so uh, so they are going to fit your size rather than a, an adult person. So at least it, it seems like uh, uh, it looks like it's a proper kind of equipment, but uh, this cliff is still tall, and uh, like regardless of what you're using, the, the simple thought of dangling off of the side of it is definitely uh, an unpleasant one. Pip, uh, Pip looks to Tekka and looks back to the harness. Pip, I test the construction to ensure you're safe. Uh, and Tekka will kind of just grab the climber's kit from Talix without like saying a word uh, and sort of like test the rope, test the harness 
Uh, is that a roll or? Um, do you have any uh, pre previous experience with something like this? Uh, with ropes, definitely. Okay. Um, no roll required. You can tell it is sturdy and it doesn't seem to have been uh, um, to have been messed with. Hmm. Perhaps one of us should have went down first. Uh, we still can if you'd rather. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh... I know <laughs> it's hard to trust strangers sometimes out here. <clears throat> I look at Tekka. Are you fine going down? Tekka just nods. All right. Oh, well, once again, go down on Pip's level. And take off the handkerchief from my neck. All right, listen, Pip. If you don't trust what he is giving you, while you clamp down, put this around your hand, tie it to the rope, and, well, don't tie it to the rope, but then slowly slide down. That makes a tie too, well, strong. I promise you, it won't rip apart. And I can go first, so... Rest comes to worst, I should be able to catch you. He takes it, and he then moves over to the climbing gear and, and sort of tries to wrestle it on himself, not really knowing exactly how it works. Uh, if you'd allow me... I kind of, like, look to Brooke for permission. <laughs> Just... Be gentle. Okay, I approach very slowly. And just help <laughs> tighten up some of the, some of the things. Um, Talix, you proceed to do so under the the very uh, close, very attentive uh, uh, gaze uh, of the other uh, of Pip's companions uh, until the the, stra uh, the straps are fully on. All right. If you guys want to go first, go ahead. Otherwise, I'm fine to go first. Oh, well, fortune favors the bold, right, Telex? Uh, and he's going to like slap you on the back, and he's just going to walk <laughs> towards the edge. <laughs> professor, <laughs> oh, come on! Well, allow me, like... allow me, Professor. What? Please, uh, just in case, I I'd hate for anything to go wrong. Well, uh, nonsense, there's no... Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh, are you jumping with me or no? Jumping? Whoa. Yes. <laughs> well, do you intend to climb down the rope? Do you think that these old bones can support my own weight? Ha! No chance. Yes, we can jump. <laughs> Any of you are also welcome to jump with me. Sort of... Sorry, I, think, I, I think I can manage all five of us, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, yeah, do I know that he has some sort of magic for this? Yeah, absolutely. Did okay. we spend all this oh. time putting on climbing gear? <laughs> well, you know, good, I figured uh, you all look like you didn't know how to uh, put on that gear. I didn't want to interrupt, you know, now you have a new skill. <laughs> as unnecessary as it, as it may be, but, uh, you know, any chance is a learning opportunity, and now you've had yours. Would you all like to leap? People keep the climbing gear <laughs> <laughs> While they're talking, Tech has already grabbed the rope, <gasps> and he's Ooh. starting to climb down along okay. the wall. Okay, uh, Tekka, there are mm -hmm. there are multiple pittance on the wall that have been uh, set at regular intervals. So um, you can very you don't even have to like actually dangle from the rope with your with your own arms. It's uh, uh, you're using the the you're holding onto the rope, but you're really just stepping down uh, these pittance. So it's uh, it's a pretty simple climb as long as you're not looking down and realizing how high up uh, you actually are. And you can hear the waves beneath you getting louder and louder the further you get, uh, you climb down uh, until you set your feet um, still a few uh, still a small distance away from the actual um, where the lowest bottom of the cliffs would be which you can't really see through the water uh, but there is sort of like um, a bit of a of an edge uh, that that protrudes out and you step on that and 
you're standing in front of uh, some kind of uh, entrance into the cliff with uh, a staircase leading up into it. Um, and now that you're down here, you would also see... Um, first of all, when standing on here, you're still standing in a little bit of water, about uh, two feet high. And uh, uh, the water reaches the steps, and the lowest ones are worn. They're, they're worn nearly down to a, a smooth slope, and they're covered in, in algae. Um, but uh, beyond that, the circuit seems to be fine. And at the end of the rope you climbed down, you see some kind of uh, harness, not too uh, unlike the one that Pepas put on, although it seems uh, um, different, very differently built. Uh, Tekka looks up and shouts, Clear! Yes, yes, he says it is clear. Uh, anyone who is with me, let's go! I'll jump with the professor. He's, uh, as he's walking over towards the, the ledge of this thing, he's, uh, he's going to mage hand and pull, like, a feather from the ground beneath where that nest is. I'm sure there's, like, a, a small piece of down mm -hmm. or something. Um, and mage hand it over to himself. Uh, you all can, you know, see the spectral mage hand. It's not invisible or anything. Um, and he pulls a feather over to his fingers and is kind of rubbing it between his, his, his calluses. Like, is this seems structurally sound. This should hold us. Uh, and as he's walking towards the edge, anyone who's with him, uh, it's like, well, uh, here we go. And he's going to leap off the side and, uh, the feather between his fingers is going to kind of disintegrate. And, um, uh, he casts feather fall on, uh, me and, uh, up to four other people. So anyone who wants to go with him. Do either Brook or Pip trust the uh, hopping off the, cl the cliff with the professor? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> 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 Alright, well, Pontifex and uh, Talix, we, uh, we descend and land comfortably on the ground. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you um, as you're descending at a, at a safe speed, you do use the rope to sort of pull yourself a little bit closer onto the cliff as it sort of, uh, uh, it slants backward, uh, sure. back into it. And uh, you, you pull yourself towards uh, this, this uh, cave uh, and you're inside. You know, one of these days, you're going to get used to all the things I can do. Just to be clear, I was doing that to make sure you were safe. I would have rather climbed down, obviously, but... Yes, uh, sure, I... you know, I appreciate your concern. Well, thank you, anyway. Of course. Up top, uh, up top, Pip sort of looks back and goes... <laughs> and says... He took one of your feathers to the bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, a whistling replies back. I'm not using it anymore. <laughs> um, and then Pip will go over towards the edge and uh, give a look to Bro Brooke and just start trying to descend, uh, attaching it, uh, the harness to the rope, to the uh, rope and however he can. Mm -hmm. um, with um, Earlier, with Talix's guidance, as he like, uh, put the harness on you and showed you how it works, you can see there is these uh, series of metal uh, claws that you just you attach one, you lower yourself, uh, you attach a different one, and you detach a previous one, and you keep doing this over and over so that you're always fastened with at least one of them, so that falling should be uh, impossible even if you were to uh, let go entirely. And your your climb is definitely slower uh, than Tekka's, but uh, uh, you reach the bottom just fine. Pip sort of shakily gets off, um, clearly frightened. Did well. I guess I would go last. Okay. Once there's no counterweight on the rope anymore. Mm-hmm. I would start making my way down. Uh, Brooke, you, you trust in, in your own strength uh, uh, to easily make the climb. Until the five of you uh, are at the entrance of this cave. What's it look like? Okay, um, so in front of you is the staircase with the very uh, the, the steps at the very bottom having been worn uh, by water, but uh, uh, further up the steps seem fine, where the water would not have reached, even on the uh, highest tides. Uh, on your left and on your right, uh, as uh, 
on the side of the staircase itself, there are statues of a woman holding her hands together in front of her. And um, you can't really see the top of the steps because it's, uh, well, actually, some of you can. Um, anyone with dark vision will be able to, to, see, to see that the steps eventually open up in some kind of wide, uh, non-natural uh, room. But I believe Brook and Pontifex don't have dark vision. I don't uh, have dark vision. Not. If it is dark, though, he's gonna like kind of like bing the tip of his uh, of his staff up against like the the wall, and then a little light will appear on the end of his stick. Okay. I'm um, casting the light cantrip. I will also need a religion check from everyone, and Tekka and Brook will roll with advantage. Mm. Religion. Yes. And also, oh, it's so easy to remember you guys' passive perceptions because they're, <laughs> they're all so similar. Oh. Okay. Um, that will be... That will be Pontifex, uh, Brook, and Tekka. In different ways, though. Okay. Uh, Pontifex and Brook, uh, looking at these statues, uh, they, they all represent in the same kind of figure. Um, you've... You think you've... Um, they, you've come across uh, uh, things that look like this, like statues, or perhaps like the... Um, the middle part of a fountain, the decorative bit where the water comes out, uh, looking like this figure. And it is not a, a, a figure that any of you uh, have a name for, um, but uh, Tekka does. Uh, Tekka knows uh, that this is, despite she looks a little bit different, but there is like no doubt in your mind you see it and it kind of uh, hates you as soon as you uh, pay any uh, amount of attention to it. Um, this is the... You notice as uh, the lady of the land, it's you're far uh, from home, but uh, it's here. Uh, Tekka will rush ahead and kind of land on his knees in front of it and inspect it. Okay. Uh, the ones at the base of the steps, they have the, the um, what would be their feet and basically their lower uh, half uh, having uh, been worn out by the water, while the top part is only worn out by time. Uh, there's dust and cobwebs on all of these statues, uh, some moldy growth even uh, here and there. Um, nobody has been here for a long while and these... The, the, the state of these statues is definitely uh, saddening to you. You said I recognize the statue, but I don't know what it is, right? I've mm -hmm. seen it before. It's some kind of figure uh, that you've seen here and there in Ladaria. Alright, I would also walk up after seeing Tekka rush to it. Um, Tekka, you seem to know what this is. I've seen it before, but... So if I, I can't quite put my thumb on it, but I recognize this. Uh, you? Alex, you should uh, take notes, maybe do a little sketch. Uh, yeah, for, uh, sure thing. Hmm. Rustle around. Is this some sort of, uh... Where have you seen this before? Uh, it is something religious. Uh, this is Ladarian faith. Oh, fascinating. This could perhaps be something of interest to you. Absolutely. Uh, it looks like our new friend here religion. knows. Sorry, I'd what? Like, I'd like to ask him about it, but... Uh... Hmm. Uh, Tekka will turn to you, Talix, uh, and Pontifex as you are discussing this. Uh, and he says, Hmm. 
Sketcher, take great care depicting her. Who is she exactly? Our lady. She protects us. A lady. Cares for us. And she is everywhere. Sounds a little familiar. Fleetfoot knows her. I must ask him. Um, yeah, Tekka will stand back up and kind of just reflect upon her. Well, I'm uh, going to have a look around. While you uh, do this, I will look elsewhere. And he's going to kind of just, you know, look around uh, with his studious eye to see if he can find any other clues of where Fleetfoot may have went or why he was here. Okay. Um, you're proceeding up the steps. Uh, he's not like separating from the group per se. If I am, I can. I'm definitely keeping them like within eye eye shot. Specifically, Talix. Like, I'm. He's never gonna like round a corner or anything. But yeah, he'll. I guess he'll explore out as far as um. As long as he's not leaving sight of the group, he does have his little light on his staff, so. Mm hmm. It's easy to track. Hey, okay. uh, everyone, pick up your minis and uh, uh, take them off the table. Bring them on on your side. Oh. Oh. Let's see. Nope. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> At the end of the staircase, you find yourselves in an area that must have looked far better in times past, but now it's covered in dust, moss, and cobwebs, and smells very unpleasant. There are weeds growing in the cracks on the walls and on the ground, and some statues and other stone structures like pillars have toppled over. Um, before you can take a better look around uh, um, and just position all yourselves somewhere here towards the top of the of the staircase. Um, oh, the top? At, yeah, towards the... Oh, this actually might be a little difficult, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Forget the staircase. <laughs> Put your minis at the base. I know that Pontifex is the one that's uh, uh, like heading first. And uh, Pontifex, is, you take just a very, very brief look around and... Uh, um, something in the shadows <laughs> moves, yelps, and uh, uh, darts towards you. Um, uh, but is there like a rough size, like something very small, like a um, critter, or is like a person size? A uh, person sized. Okay. Uh, and darts to where? Professor, if we're going ahead, be careful. These these old constructions can be a little. Oh, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he'll, like, kind of swing the tip of his staff towards that to illuminate that specific area. Uh, and I think whatever it is, I think he just says, uh, HALT! Uh, and is casting command. Okay. Um, that's, a uh, it's a save a for me, right? DC 13 wisdom save. <laughs> Let it be known that my very... First roll of the campaign is a natural one. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> hey, that wonderful for good. you. Uh, <laughs> not yeah. exactly the happiest. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, he swings his staff to the side and yells out halt, and his voice like echoes with magical power. It's very obvious that he's not just saying the word. It's very obvious that it's very magically imbued, and it probably echoes down the hall. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, if they uh, fail, so they, um... Yeah, the rest of you all hear it. And uh, this creature stops <coughs> uh, feet, mere feet away from you. Uh, this is a, a humanoid about five feet tall, and um, he's hunched forward. He's a bit of a shriveled, bluish gray skin, um, black box, those traits that uh, all Lidarians uh, share, and a pair of tiny horns. He has the legs of a goat with mangy black fur on his lower body and back. Um, he looks dangerously scrawny, and he's wearing just worn rags. And you realize at this point, with this thing being right in front of you, that the unpleasant smell that just permeates the area, it mostly comes from him. Uh, he stops, and he looks terrified for, uh, for a moment. Um, seemingly not really understanding why he stopped running. And he stares at you. Well, now that was a little bit abrupt. Uh, and he will, you know, kind of drop the command uh, and, like, take a knee. Are you able to understand me? He stares, mm. eyes wide, and then he goes, Heep! and he disappears from you. Uh, from your sight. Oh. The rest of you uh, see this creature I just described plop somewhere in the middle between all of you and yelp again and scrambling towards the, the rope behind you. I would uh, try to catch him. Okay. If he starts running away. Uh, that will be a grapple check. Sure, what is that? Alex is still ruffling around in his backpack looking for a folded chain shirt in there. <laughs> 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 he just like jumps out of the way. Like, oh! uh, what do I roll for that? Uh, I, your choice. Wait, no, you're doing it. It's athletics. It's athletics. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. It's my choice of acrobatics uh, or athletics to resist it. Let me just make sure that. Okay, uh, you catch this creature, and he uh, he he screams in this really high pitched, terrified uh, noise, a voice just scratchy. He's whoa, trying whoa. to wiggle out of your grip. All right, whoa, whoa, whoa! We're not here to hurt you. And then he's in the same way that he appeared in between you guys, he disappears again. Um, you're, you end up just clutching nothing but air, and you look back just sort of instantly following the trail of smell from this thing, and, and it's now hanging from the rope and climbing upward. That is amazing. Someone quick stop him! Uh, oh, as Brooke calls out, um... Pip will just sort of look up at this creature and uh, Pip's vibrantly green eyes will sort of uh, shine a little bit brighter as his pupils dilate just a little bit more and Pip will try and pull him back with telekinesis. <laughs> okay, let me He'll see how that works. need to make a strength save. Okay, strength save. We have a 19. Uh, yeah, that succeeds. <laughs> uh, so the creature, for a moment, uh, is dragged down just a few inches down the rope, uh, and seemingly by nothing, right? There's like no visual. Nothing, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it almost looks like he's losing his grip despite the fact that he's holding on for dear life, uh, and then it begins climbing up until it's out of your sight. Can I rush towards the cliffside? Yeah. I just want to look up. This thing is uh, um, very much relying on a pit and on the wall in order to, to um, use his hooved feet to uh, pull himself up. He doesn't look very strong, but look, he looks desperate enough to make the climb. I, I'm going to turn to Tekka. Do you know anything about that? I've seen I've seen people sort of like that, but I don't think they were quite like that. If you catch my drift, 
I cannot say. On Earth. Uh, hmm. uh, Pontifex at the top of the stairs uh, uh, hmm. after this sudden... Uh, this was only a few seconds. Uh, and yeah. uh, 15, 15 seconds after you see this thing, it's gone. Um, yeah. And you have a bit of uh, time to take a better look around. And the first thing that catches your eye that, is com that seems utterly out of place in this area is that there is a bed on your left. Uh, old, in fact, can I, can I ignore the meaning? The, 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 the uh, pillows and the blankets are, for the most part, they just have been eaten away. Um, and there is very little left besides the wooden, uh, the wooden frame. Um, okay. Hold on, uh, I lost my spot. Um, with the creature gone, hmm? it, it looks like a bed. It's... Like, is there um, any, like, belongings or anything on the bed or strewn along the ground or underneath it? Nothing of the sort. Okay. Just the same smell of that creature that just escaped you. Oh. Ahead of you, you spot the, uh, the two statues. Uh, just, you recognize the same figure um, that uh, was also on the staircase. And, uh, um... Between the two of them is a small pedestal holding up a bowl. And within the bowl, rest a handful of uh, beautiful oval-shaped stones. They're each a different color. Uh, some have scattered, in fact, most of them have scattered uh, on the ground. Uh, you see an inscription on the pedestal. Uh, what's the rest of the party doing? It's about a minute of, uh, of finally getting that shirt on and loosely throwing my vest over it before I, I'm up the stairs behind Pontifex. Pip is following uh, Brooke or Tekka, whoever goes up first. I've also, I'm also going to unstrap my shield at this point and kind of <clears throat> hold it in one arm, stick in the other, and head up. Can I give the rope a quick pull? Not, I don't want to bring it down, I just want to pull it. Uh, you feel that it's still attached to the tree. All right. And I'll go back inside as well. <clears throat> okay, you all head into the room. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the Lady of the Land. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, what was your name? Uh, Tekka? Uh, would these orbs have any meaning to you? Um, is Pontifex able to tell what these orbs are? Like, what are they made of? Or, or just what they actually, if they have any meaning. But he's more primarily concerned with, like, what they're made out of. Hmm. That will be a nature check. Okay. Uh, Pip seeing those stones will uh, be interested as well. Uh, Pip, this is... Uh, I will not need a check from you. Okay. Both of you, um, if you just... Take a quick look at these stones. Uh, they're not gemstones. They're not, they don't seem to be uh, particularly precious, but they are a various assortment of uh, uh, different kinds of pebbles. Huh. Does uh, this have any significance to your lady? Hmm. Not the lady, but if orbs are pearls, then perhaps. I, uh, I stick my hand in the bowl and start picking around, picking, picking up pebbles and examining them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, same thing. They're pebbles. Uh, you, you do notice were... uh, an inscription on the pedestal. Like, beneath the bowl. Is this uh, a language that any of us happen to speak? Anyone recognize it? While none of you speak it, I see there is a bit of a problem with this, huh? Mm. Here, hold on. Um, it's because of the extra floor here. There is, um, uh, actually, for, to describe it, um, there, it, it looked like there was a proper floor laid down, but most of, the, of these tiles have broken off. Uh, let me see if getting rid of this makes the mini situation better. Yeah. All right. Nice. So, uh, just... Uh, there is basically, for the most part, it's exposed stone under the uh, original flooring. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and none of you can read the inscription, but most of you can understand a few words here and there. It's sort of like, um, sort of like trying to read Latin if you know some other uh, romantic language. Um, you're getting the bits and pieces. Um, so everyone just roll an intelligence check. Is this, are uh, we getting talents? the pieces from uh, Itarium or? That's the, oh, hold on. Let me see the languages you speak. Da, da, da. It's the one Alex, Bardorian uh, language I've got. Okay, yeah, that's the one. Um, so for you, that's where you're drawing your knowledge from. <laughs> And you said this is just a flat intelligence check, no uh, no skill proficiencies? <clears throat> uh, regardless of that, though, uh, Jason, for you, the check is with advantage because of your particular skills. Oh, lovely. Before Pip even looks at the inscription, he's going to start picking up some of the pebbles that are on the floor. What is this? Are you... <laughs> Natural 20. Are you putting them back or are you taking them? Just holding on to them for now. Okay. I'll take the uh, first one. So you all put your uh, your heads together, and um... <laughs> uh, Brooke, despite the fact that there are no uh, languages that you would know to slend, um, you still know, you know, just a little bit here and there, bits and pieces. You all know how to say, you know, basic things in the, uh, the most spoken languages on the door, like, uh, uh, hello, and where's the bathroom? <laughs> um, and ju just from putting your heads together and by putting these uh, uh, scores together, um, you understand most of the writing. It's just a couple... <laughs> It's just a couple of uh, short sentences. Uh, um, it says one, and then the words per person. And that's the extent of the first sentence that you understand. For the second sentence, you understand bring across worlds, carry to them. Huh. Uh, is this is this script that we're deciphering? Is it like we? It's easy to know this is a Ladarian language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not something that my magic would help with. Exactly. Okay. Eh. And how many of these stones are there? Did you say there's like a ton of them? Yeah, like if it, about fifty or so. Okay. So uh, there's one per person, and then something across worlds. Okay. Yeah, I think carry there them. It's like one blank per person, bring blank across worlds, blank, carry to them. Yeah. So carry one per person, carry these across the world. Uh, carry what? For what purpose? Where? Across what world? Across the Sea of Chaos? That's important now, that's... I know, these look way too old. There's no way they know about travel across the plane. Well... It's new even for us. I've seen some weird things in these old constructions. I haven't been in many, but... You know, we... We keep finding things like this around... Hmm. Mm, indeed. Um... Are we making an offering? Uh, I'm short on pebbles, if you understand. You said you've been in one of these places before? Uh, Did no, I get that right? Old runes like this, but... Uh, I, I wouldn't call myself an expert to not, like, Jamul or anything. Alright. Well, don't be so modest. you spent plenty of years studying this place. You're clearly the expert amongst us. Well... What all, kind all of... I think is my first guess is this is some of their magic. Ludorian magic? A divine? Arcane? Something else? Well, it can't be divine, can it? I wouldn't be so sure. 
You know what I say about making assumptions. Well, yes, I know what you say, Professor. <laughs> Pip has um, just been, like, sort of going behind all of you, picking up these pebbles, and as he does so, uh, just starts one by one putting them into a small satchel at his side. Okay. It's most so of them underground. You... you wouldn't end up with like a good 30, 35 of them. <laughs> His satchel is now just swollen. <laughs> so what offerings do you usually give at these places? Oh, I've, I haven't seen anything quite like this, but I'm just trying to surmise, you know? Mm-hmm. Fair. I'll, uh, I'm going to dig out a copper piece and plop it into the bowl and see what happens. Okay. Uh, you hear it uh, just clinking around, and it's now in there. <laughs> Maybe it needs to be pebbles. I don't have any pebbles from our land, though. I don't think. Well, maybe I do, actually. Let me dig around. Drop down to the ground, put pop my back back down, and start digging around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll have pebbles, though. I normally collect living things. You said these pebbles are of different colors. Are these like earthy colors, or do they look like a little, all kinds. like a little uh, surreal? Okay. All sorts of colors, all the shades of the rainbow. There's even white, gray, and black, and the shades in between. Um, artifacts. And yeah. Talix. So the Talix is currently busy pulling things um, out of uh, his backpack. But a Pontifex, you do sort of um, turn your attention towards. There is one, uh, and only one. <clears throat> uh, door only one exit out of here which is currently to your right uh, and as mm -hmm. you glance over you do spot something uh next to it uh, um on the wall on the left side of the door there is a grid um it's faded uh for the most part but still visible because every every square in that grid is sort of protruding and they look like buttons it's a five by five grid with another inscription beneath uh, on the right side of the door, here. Um, there is another series of squares, uh, and uh, those are not buttons, they, they're not protruding, it's just uh, uh, this faded writing uh, onto the wall, and sort of like a plaque. Uh, um, and here, let me, oops, <clears throat> let me just show them to you. These, this is the grid of just the... Uh, of buttons, it's just five by five, mm -hmm. and uh, one. nope, the other one. You're not seeing anything on this side of the table, right? Well, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I see that one. Oh, you see? Okay. Yeah. All nice. right. Interesting. Um. Is that the solution? <laughs> <laughs> Insight check the DM. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are the buttons and this is the inscription, mm -hmm. and it just looks like some squares are marked. Uh, the buttons, are they like indents or are they protrusions? They're protrusions. Huh. Hey, uh, I, uh, have, uh, I have put them down it. in the, like, um, I'm currently looking at the table from the perspective of Brooke and Pontifex, like towards the door. Okay, got it. Hey, Telex, I believe we've maybe one of those puzzle things you're so fond of in these ruins. Oh, uh, I've got nothing for rocks anyway. Um, pick my backpack back up. Head over. Okay, can you make uh, the the inscription thing on the right? Is it like a language I'm not understanding, or is it yeah, more like a diagram? Yeah, it's the same one. So, like, if you all okay. just all focus on that and sort of all put your heads together, I'm just gonna use the same uh, uh, rolls as before. What you get, uh, what you what you understand from this one is, um, it's all one sentence, and you you understand the words, the other half, the answer, in your dreams. Well, it seems you're right about this being Ladarian magic. Uh, it seems to. Suggest that sleeping is the key to open the door. Yeah, maybe not so complicated, and I think Pontifex is going to grab the door handle and just try to open it. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so you, you touch the handle with your hand? But yeah, yeah. Okay, He's just thinking, hand. like, there's some code to open the door magically, but, okay. like, you know, there's yeah. also the direct approach. Yeah, it's closed. And not only is it closed, but the way um, the way it's built into its frame, uh, it it feels like it actually just can't move. Oh. Are you sure this doesn't look like a dragon chess, I don't know, move, whatever you call them? <laughs> well, now that you mentioned, I could spend the next 30 minutes overanalyzing this in terms of dragon chess maneuvers, <laughs> but I don't think that that is the solution that these Ladarians would have in mind. It's a very small board compared to what you're used to. I mean, there's, simple things that I can trust. there's a bed here that was probably being used by that unfortunate looking creature. Well, perhaps he did not always look so unfortunate. Uh, is uh, anyone going to try sleeping? <laughs> Tekka will crouch down to Pip and try to get his attention. Uh, Pip was currently sort of moving over to the pedestal and looking for more rocks. Oh, and yeah. you just catch him with, like, his hand in the candy jar, as it were. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure we should be disturbing that. Hmm. Pip, it seems no matter how full the river, it still wants to grow. Would you let go of these pearls? Pip holds up the the big satchel of, of rocks that he had collected and and sort of looks up with a pleading look. <laughs> um to uh, just to double check. Mm, you're the only person who has any of those, right? Yeah. Okay. Of like I 30 of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue. Pip, these are not for one to keep. Mm. There will be other stones. Wait, not that you Wait, are they speaking Clernan? Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> How do they mention it? Maybe they are to take. One per person. We had it backwards. Well, we were to take a stone from the bowl? You, you think? Is that crazy? I mean, you know, shot. call me a conspiracy theorist, but I believe there to be... He, like, looks among the group, five of us, and then turns to the inscription on the wall. It seems to be five... Uh, Pips, as it were. Well, we'll, we'll look back at Tekka and, and just give a, a sad but understanding nod and just start scooping some of these rocks into the bowl, being very careful to keep the ones that he's collected himself. Of his, his, his old collection. No, I think we should try to each take one. See what happens. Tekka will pat Pip's shoulder. You did well, Pip. And he gives sort of like a reluctant nod uh, to Talix's suggestion. Oh. You heard the men. And I'll mage hand a pebble just of, of random one of them to my hand. Okay. You have one pebble in your hand. Um This this hand it, it just like it it just a just a flying spectral hand that you, you reach and grab something with? Yeah, it's uh it's it's clearly visible, um and it is uh clearly a hand. Um I think, actually, let me, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it has an extra digit. I think it has six fingers. Hmm. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, this uh, this hand has six fingers on it, but other than that, yeah, it's just like a spectral, um, like pale blue hand that seems to be able to interact with things. Um, he pulled a feather with it before. He's pulled a pebble now. He seems to be able to do this like at will, willy nilly, and he's not really shy about doing it. Hmm. Uh, okay. Tekka will swing his quarter staff and hold it between Pip and this spectral, this blue hand. Oh, uh, no, this is uh, this is not a weapon. This is more of a tool of convenience. Uh, uh, sorry, and a little handle like wave <laughs> in the air. <laughs> Forget these things make people uncomfortable. Understand his feelings. You can walk over and ask for what? For the pebble? Yes. Sure, if you insist, I make my way. And he will, you know, hunched over old man hobble his way over to the kid. Hmm. Would you be willing to part with one of these? For an old man? Pip will, will um... Pip will step aside. <clears throat> you might have take this as permission, and he's looking at a, at Tekka. <laughs> yeah, Tekka gives a nod. Right, a uh, spectral ham. Comes <laughs> 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 a bean. And pulls it, you know, from five feet away to his hand. And then he, you know, stands back up from his knee, uh, you know, kind of wobbles as he as he gets vertical again and uses his staff to kind of support himself. What? I'm just going to, like, stand up very straight and give a big, wide, very nervous smile. Like, not to forgive the professor, he doesn't always realize why people might be uncomfortable with magic like that. And this whole time, the end of his staff is, like, radiating a blue light from the catcher before. Mm. So, so uh, Pontifex you know, has around. one pebble, yeah? Oh, yeah, and I'll, I'll shuffle up after that and um, just grab one and then, like, kind of sink back. Okay. All right, I'll take one after that as well. Does Tekka take one? Um, Tekka will kind of... Bow his head uh, for a few seconds before holding one in his palm. Okay. Pip will look into the bowl and and oh man, he has to pick just one, and that <laughs> that's hard. Um, but Pip will will look over to Pontifex and Talix and sort of take what Talix said and. And sort of, while looking at Pontifex, Pip holds out his own hand towards the bowl, and you don't even see a hand appear, but one of the rocks just sort of floats up in the air and then makes its way towards Pip's palm, and then he grabs it. Oh. And sort of watches for your reaction. Yeah, no, Talix definitely, like, stiffens and, like, reels back again. Like whenever you glared at them the first time. Oh, oh boy. Seems the little one has something in common with the two of us. Not just one of your animal people. All of you, and Pip, you have experienced this before, but all of you, uh, when, when Pontifex says, uh, says this comment, you all hear his voice, not just physically with your ears from whatever direction he is, he, he is compared to you, uh, but also with... Uh, uh, pleasant uh, clarity just in your heads you you also heard the Talix's gasp clearly in your heads anything you say from now on um, is considered to be communicated telepathically between all of you besides out loud uh, would uh, Pontifex after hearing the gasp in his head be able to make some kind of check to discern what these pebbles actually are um if Pontifex is thinking what Matt is thinking on a very meta level. You can roll Arcana. Yeah. 
I mean, Talix is just gonna say like, "This is <laughs> these are." <laughs> well, you make the you make the logical um, connection that it appears that uh, holding the pebbles is doing this, but uh, uh, anything uh, beyond that, probably not. It seems these uh, pebbles have some sort of uh, telepathic properties between them. How did you call it? Ladarian magic? We're gonna be steeped in Ladarian magic, yeah. Well, I assumed it was Ladarian magic, but this is uh, very close to things that I can do, and I don't know Ladarian magic. I know. Hmm. Well, it's like I said before. Oh dear. Well, clearly... Something ahead of us is going to require this, so I guess we'll just bear with it for now. Ooh, not that it I... seems most of us mind. This is not your work, teacher? Uh, mine? No, no. Uh, I can only do things on smaller scales. I can communicate myself to others and sometimes read theirs, but uh, this is... This is networked. This is something that is practiced. This is not uh, not something of my doing. It, it makes me wonder, though, is there a range? Are we the only ones to have ever taken these pebbles? Is there perhaps a third party listening? If so, you're free to speak. You mean Jamil? You stay silent oh for a few seconds. You don't hear anything. I... Well, perhaps it's best to err on this side of caution and assume that anything we're saying while in possession of these is perhaps being overheard. <clears throat> Sounds like the smart thing to do. But uh, so... I don't see any reason to abandon the rocks. They seem useful. They'll be mm. necessary. So the diagram, something about sleep? And the other what? half, look at it, it's half the grid, more yeah. or less. Give or take. I, well, I, I don't remember any of dreams, so it can't be me. Well, this is uh, perhaps some sort of uh, riddle, maybe. It requires someone to sleep, or perhaps this diagram is, uh... He's gonna, like, kind of look around on the ground. Uh, this room is... Uh, geometrically pleasing. It is a perfect square, from what I can tell. Uh, perhaps this diagram is to... To show positions? Well, we could try it, I, I suppose. Uh, if anyone else has ideas, I'm always open for suggestions. I, I do love a good puzzle. I as well, but... Uh, given the presence of the bed, I feel like that's probably the most likely. But the positioning, that's that's easier, so we can go ahead and try it. Was this oriented on the wall, like, this direction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a tough it's part, oriented so... as if you were facing the okay. door. And you said it was on the right side? Uh, this appears um, to be the right half of, of, the, door, the, yeah. okay. of the diagram as well. Uh, Pontifex is going to post um, in one of the positions and is going to like point his little light stick, um, or maybe even use his mage hand to designate. Perhaps we just stand, you know, here and here and here, and he'll kind of point people. <clears throat> Brooke will carefully go onto one of these positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're trying to recreate the diagram, but across this, this yeah. room. Yeah, something like that. Okay, uh, you all work together to um, to get to your positions, and uh, um, you wait for a few seconds, and when nothing happens, you adjust a little bit. You try um, to move few, uh, one person a few feet over here, a person a few feet over there. Um, you try a few a few combinations until you're pretty sure that your movement within this room doesn't seem to uh, be affecting anything that you can see or hear. Well... Is anyone comfortable sleeping in that bed? Uh, if comfort is the question, I can perhaps help you sleep. <laughs> oh, not me, not me. You know, would require some willingness on your end, but... Uh... 
I, like I said, I, I wouldn't even remember. I, I don't remember any dreams. Well, I'm not one to shy away from, uh, from hypotheses. If no one else is willing, I would uh, gladly um, take a rest. Uh, Brooke. Mm-hmm. Um, what Alex has just said, uh, kind of caught, uh, um, your attention. Which part of it? About him not remembering his dreams? Mm-hmm. Um... Hold on. Sorry, my browser is not working with me. There it is. Fill so, in the silence, I'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you three come to travel together? You seem... Well, Brooke, was it? Yes. You're from Ellen Arden, right? I'm not. I am originally, in Plurner at least, from Elimiar. Oh, really? I see, it does appear managed. somewhat okay. fey like well, you call my kin Furbolks. I wouldn't be surprised if... Well, you might have seen one before, Pontifex. Huh? I'm not sure about the others. You might oh, have... yes, I've spent a little bit of time in Ilumyar on my way from... Uh, I, I traveled to Alien Arden from Nazardora. This is a bit of a journey, as you can surmise, and I... I made my way through Ilmiar shortly. I can recognize a fey folk when I see one. Really? When was that? Oh, when was my travel from uh, from the play? Uh, let me consult my timeline. And, uh, <laughs> Which <laughs> gives me the perfect <laughs> chance. I actually um, do have this, uh, like a full 400 gear timeline of this man, but um, <laughs> he's going to hold up uh, in his right hand um, a gold and like brass seeming um metallic orb uh it looks very mechanical and very complex um it, your your guess at what this thing is would be somewhere like an astrolabe or a compass or something else um and there's a bunch of runes all over it that would be um indecipherable to anyone here including myself um <laughs> And he's going to kind of hold it up in front of him, and the orb is going to levitate off his hand just a little bit. And, uh, like, the little kind of gold rings that surround the outside of it, uh, kind of like a globe, will kind of spin around, and little bits of blue lights will come out. And uh, then it's going to put, like, a projection of sorts. It's going to project from a little blue light on the side of it into the air. Um, legible text. Uh, and in this text, you guys would actually see um, what would look like a diary uh, written in um, in the Plurnan common language. Uh, and on one of these little pages that's holographically flipping through, uh, there's a time. Uh, it says here, uh, I stepped down from my place of academia uh, in uh, 1105. What is that now? So going on 50 years, actually. I left, uh, I left Nezrodoro for Elian Arden, and uh, it seems I arrived at the capital at the end of 1105. So yes, just shy of 50 years ago. You're old. Oh, <laughs> you know, some of us age like wine, and some like milk in my unfortunate position. Is that the first time we've heard Pip's talk? First time we heard his mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, This is the second time Pontifex is here you speak. Yeah, but... <laughs> Zai, like actual voice. Uh, Brooke, yeah. um, the thing that caught your attention about uh, about Alex's statement, it, it, it took you a little bit. It was totally you who had to think about it. <laughs> um, but you, you really remembered someone a long time ago saying something similar about uh, um, never really remembering any of her dreams. And I remember that was Leah. It was one of those random facts, the random things that were just mentioned uh, um, during all yeah. those talks that you would have on your missions. So, um, just a little, like, quirk of hers that she doesn't really recall any dreams. Uh, 
do we want to finish the conversation with Pontifex first? Yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it has been uh, some time, 50 years, uh, half a lifetime for some, a blink of an eye for others. Or more than a lifetime for others. Yeah, he is old. Older than me. And you oh, called yes. me old, Pip. <laughs> wow. He'll, uh, he'll kind of wave his hand at the hologram and it'll flick back a couple of pages to the time. Uh, yes, uh, I was born... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the 25th day of the ninth month of the year 765. Uh, back in what we know as the Age of Awakening. You're really old. I'm going on my 400th year in about another decade or so. I think uh, I'm 12. <laughs> oh, you are but a sprout, a fledgling. Yet you are already taking such grand adventures. That nice. was sort of back to my original question. How did you end up traveling together? We well, all seek Fleetfoot one way or another. Amazing. We just met each other on the way here. Had a common interest. Those two people, and I point at Tekka and Pip, are very skilled and helpful. So, it was in all our interest to just travel together. By the way, Telix, uh, have you never rem remembered any dreams? Uh, <laughs> no, but it's... I get this question sometimes. It's it's just a thing, I guess. I maybe I sleep too heavily, or maybe I don't sleep enough. <laughs> Can't tell. All right. Uh, it just never happened. I'm sorry for that. Well, I guess it's a blessing in disguise, depending on what kind of dreams you have, right? Or would have? You wouldn't really know. <laughs> Concept. Even uh, nightmares, as you call them, can be learning experiences. It can prepare you for future things in life to perhaps not be so scared of the unknown. Huh. Inhabiting or, uh, I guess, encountering the demons of your dreams can be uh, productive. You sort of see Tekka begin to stumble and... He slowly walks his way towards the bed. Oh, mm. seems we have a volunteer. I will need a moment of rest. Um, uh, in the interest of asking for consent this time, uh, would you perhaps mind if I were to monitor you in your rest? Mm. I have a way of gleaning the surface thoughts of others. Uh, and if this dreaming is the key, perhaps the answer will come to you and you need not remember it, for I will be ever watchful. While I do not trust you, teacher, I believe in Brooke and Pip that they shall watch over me. So is this a... Uh, I think he was asking if he could read your mind so we could see whatever you were dreaming about. So I dare not do it again without asking for permission first, but if you would so allow, I would be able to read your mind as you dream. I understood your message. Ah, perhaps the understanding was on my part. So is this a yay, a nay? I respect your decision either way. Fine. Ah. Do what you will. But... Wonderful. <laughs> He'll like clap his hands together and start rubbing them together. <laughs> uh, do you require <laughs> help to go to sleep? I can expedite the process as well. Depend, you know. <laughs> I was going to ask, I, I might be able to help a little bit. Although probably not in the same way he was going to. In the same way that, that tech uh, uh, moved in front of Pip before Pip 
now moves in front of Becca. <laughs> Perhaps another time. Uh, oh, take how you say it. Go ahead first. Uh, yeah, take uh, will take off his backpack and keep his quarter staff at his bedside, uh, slumbering on top of the sheets here. Oh, perfect. I'm going to set my backpack down and kind of be comfortable again and take out my sketchbook. What <laughs> 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 <Bloody> is sleep? <laughs> Yeah. You intend to draw he's him great, like one of your French cool. girls. Yeah. <laughs> Take a point his core staff at him. Oh. My choice, not yours. Okay, another time. I'll just start sketching the statues instead. Okay. Pontifex is going to put his hand on the copper part of his stick and detect thoughts. Um, and he is going to attempt to probe deeper, um, which would be a save which you can willingly fail if you want to. If you wish to resist him, you are welcome to. We'll definitely resist. Yeah, that is a... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, DC 14 wisdom save. Got it. Otherwise, uh, I will only detect the very surface thoughts. Mm. Nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he is uh, he is auguring deeper into your subconscious. Um, and you can feel this, I believe. Like you're you're yeah. aware of it. Yeah. Um, I think so. Hold on. Uh, I can attempt to probe deeper into the same creature's mind. If I probe deeper, they must make a save. Um, I gain insight into its reasoning, if any, its emotional state, and something that looms largely in its mind, such as something it worries over, loves, or hates. If it succeeds the save, the spell ends. Either way, the target knows that you are probing into its mind, and unless you shift your attention to another creature's thoughts, it can use its action to make another check, or to make an intelligence check contested by my own. So, you have about, I have about six in-game seconds of, uh, deep understanding of your emotional state and specifically things that loom largely in your mind. Got it. So is this a description both of what Teke is dreaming and sort of an emotional state? Should I well, you're not asleep yet. Okay. So you just instantly this second before even Teke is asleep, you detect thoughts. Okay. Yeah, he's casting the Ted thoughts on on the surface one, um, and I can do this. Right, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait! You're doing it now, or you're waiting for Teka to be asleep? Um, I think that he would be casting it like kind of right on the, you know, on the precipice of it, and then he would probe okay. deeper whenever he's asleep. All right, so like you're you're waiting for it. Yeah. Okay, just Got make sure it. I understood. No, he okay. he probably or Pontifex knows that they know this is happening, and it would probably be a little bit distracting and difficult to sleep if you can actively feel somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scooping out your brains. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, Tekka, how, how long does it normally, under normal uh, conditions, take you to sleep? In normal conditions, once Tekka feels tired, it can be near instantly. Okay. Like, disregarding light levels, Tekka can yeah, slumber in a few seconds. How do you feel about the presence of the lady in this area? Yeah, I think there's a sense of discomfort and curiosity, but also a sense of home. Because he's always known that where the lady is, is where home is for him. Falling asleep in a, in a place you've never been in before, uh, with uh, strangers that you don't fully trust, uh, um, would normally... Um, even even for you, uh, make it difficult to just uh, to just let go and fall asleep. But the presence of the lady, um, there's just this sense that uh, um, she's watching over you. Nothing bad is gonna happen as long as that's true. Um, so it doesn't take long. He uh, Teka falls asleep faster than any of you guys ever would, even on the days when you're at the most exhausted. Um, but, uh, Tekka, to, to you, um, 
it feels like you're not falling asleep. Uh, in fact, it takes you a little bit by surprise just how difficult you're finding it to be. Uh, but when you when you sort of when you when you feel finally that uh, presence in your head and you feel it uh, um, uncomfortably uh, deep into your thoughts and, and emotions and you're 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 feeling like instinctively some kind of like you're putting up a fight against it and you just sort of sit up um, inst uh, instinctively like even your own body is reacting to this and trying to push away that presence in your head um, you notice that nobody else is here anymore um it's just you and a series of strange um shadows around you um the mere silhouettes of where your companions were standing just a, just a few seconds earlier but uh you can barely catch glimpses of them and anytime you focus on any of them they're gone and you look back behind you uh, at the bed and you can see your own body asleep behind you uh pontifex you mm -hmm. Glean, um, uh, whatever at this moment will be going through uh, Tekka's mind and what he's feeling, so I'll just let Sid, uh, explain it. Uh, yes, I think Tekka will attempt to rise out of bed, and he'll kind of try to reach for one of the bedposts and kind of not feel that contact, mm -hmm. but he still manages to rise to his feet. And he tries to reach out for one of these silhouettes and they just dissipate mm -hmm. the moment he tries to focus or you tell. And he he's not scared, but he feels on edge. And he Yeah, I think he grasps his staff and keeps it at his side. Okay. Uh, Spontifex, if you perceive uh, through Tekka, um, mm -hmm. uh, after just a brief moment of quietness in his mind, you feel this sense of uh, um, almost fear and uncomfortableness that doesn't seem to stem from your presence in his mind. You're not seeing uh, what he's seeing, uh, just his emotional state and what he's thinking. Um, if I'm able to... Uh... To almost read his dream and see his, you know, astral self form or whatever kind of step up and walk. Pontifex is gonna, excuse me, and he's gonna kind of shoulder past, uh, past Brooke, and he's going to follow uh, Tekka's foot Tekka, footsteps. You hear in your mind, uh, um, Pontifex saying, "Excuse me." That doesn't seem really directed at you, but you hear it very clearly, and it doesn't come from any direction. It's just in your head. Tekka leaps back and looks in that direction. Look, looking around, just left, right, up, down. Shadows moving to... for a moment. You can't even tell where they're really placing themselves. It just, it's like movements always at the corner, uh, like the very corner of your of your vision. Uh, Tekka looks left and tries to see if he can spot the statue of the lady downstairs. The statues downstairs are there. The statues behind you in the room are there. Uh, the bad and the door, the fallen pillars, the rubble. Um, although instead of the inscription on the left side of the door, uh, you see a plaque with a different series of symbols on it. It doesn't seem to quite match the one you had seen before. Uh, and once Tekka sees uh, the lady statue, he his shoulders kind of stop tensing up and he begins investigating the door and the inscription. This is what you see. And as he sees this, he kind of traces, like, uh, traces the circles on his uh, forearm. Try to have some sort of physical memory of it. But it feels off, like... The sense of touch in the dream world is mm -hmm. not the same as it would otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Um, as he's doing this, I think Pontifex is like actually standing in his same space or whatever, and then on the wall um, with the diagram that Pontifex can see, he's going to fill in the other side. He's going to hold up his hand, and uh, as a bonus action, I can create a tiny quill in my free hand, uh, and I think this is more like um, 
I think it looks like a ballpoint pen, uh, or like a like an inkwell pen. That's what I meant. Whether or not these even exist in the world, I think that's what they look like. Um, mm -hmm. And he's going to basically magically. Uh, it doesn't require ink, and when I write with it, it produces ink in a color of my choice on the writing surface. And he's going to complete the diagram on the wall uh, in like magical glowing, uh, like a glowing white ink. Okay. And completes the diagram on the wall. And uh, would you like to draw it on, loud, the, on this thing? Uh, like we're because we can see the the right side diagram in in our reality or whatever. Yeah. So then he is drawing on the wall to complete the rest he's of it. He's drawing like over here. Yeah, he's drawing it to complete the full diagram. Okay. And uh, is talking out loud like, "Yes, your friend. He's very good at this. He remembers his place. He knows what he's doing." Uh, and Take he's you hear completing this? The, the diagram. He's doing very well. Um, the yeah. next thoughts, I think, is that it lasts a minute, right? Yeah, it is a minute. Okay, it should be around this time that you would feel the connection just faltering a little. And, uh, Tekka, you, you feel like you are uh, alone in your own mind again, although you do hear Pontifex speaking whenever he does. Well, I believe we got what we came for. We just have to wait for him to come out of it. Yeah, I, I think Texa felt like sort of a release, but he's not able to relax, knowing there's still like this voice. Uh, once the diagram is done being drawn, he's going to pull out of the, the deep probe, I guess. Back to just surface thoughts. Yeah, no, the spell is over. It's been over a minute. Okay, cool. There you go. Uh, uh, and then I'll move over to the, the grid, and I guess... Well, I suppose we ought to depress the buttons. Does anybody have objections? Wait, what? Yes, it seems You've already that, got it? Yes, uh, he was very efficient. He moved uh, with haste. He got exactly what we needed. The other half of the diagram was in his dreams. Uh, and Pontifex will point to the wall, and the, the left half now is written in glowing white ink. I believe we just pressed the buttons. Oh, shouldn't we wait for him, though? I think we should wait for him. Pip is sort of like staring over the over the bed and just saying, Tekka? Tekka, are you okay? And Tekka, you hear this in your head. Uh, Tekka at first tenses up, and Pip might even see this. But as Tekka approaches this statue, he attempts to reach out and hold his fingers against the surface of the statue. Okay. And he hears his own voice inside his head. Why? Why am I here? And uh, take a saying this out loud, yeah? Yeah. Everybody else in the group hears this in your heads, not coming from any particular direction, just the uh, um, Tekka's voice somehow disembodied and not coming from the bed. Um, oh. And Tekka, you wait for an answer. Uh, in where you currently are, uh, the statue appears to be in similar state, uh, just covered in dust and cobwebs. It's it's a pretty it's pretty sad that uh, nobody's been here taking care of them, and it feels like um, the lady has just sort of been abandoned to herself, and. Uh, you think about these things and you wait for a for an answer of any kind coming either from within yourself or from the statue itself, but you wait for as long as you as you want. Nothing comes to you. Tekka will sort of just lower his head and return to the bed into the state position that his body is. And Slowly begin to open his eyes. These stones are incredible. I could... Did you get what you wanted? I think we did. I believe that we got what you showed us. And he'll, you know, stick his <clears throat> light stick towards the wall. 
Good job, Tekka. And I also walk forward. Wait, Tekka, what was it like? What did you see? Thank you for looking for me. Well, it looked like this. I could not focus. I could not see except that on the wall. What is drawn? I wonder. It didn't feel like any ordinary dream. Not that you would know. Did it feel like you were really somewhere else? Well, here, but, you know, somewhere else. I could hear your voices, so it felt strange. Oh, I'm writing this down. <laughs> it is from what I was gleaning from his mind. Uh, it is as he says. It was no typical dream. He was uh, having an out-of-body experience, you could call it. He was in this very room that we are, but we were not perceivable. But only the other half of this grid. So then, teacher, what do we do? I believe that we merely press the buttons on the other side in accordance with the grid. Seems that you could not solve this puzzle without, uh, I guess, taking its suggestions in stride. After each other, at the same time? Uh, I mean, you are free to depress them. I don't know if there's any specific order, or if it's just to press all of them. But there are ten buttons in total. If you could do them all at once with two hands. <laughs> <laughs> well? Pontifex could do twelve. And that they could, you're very observant, and he'll hold up his hands, and Pontifex does indeed have six digits on each hand. I'm... I know this won't go anywhere, but Talix is going to try to investigate this bed. Okay. It's now suddenly much more interesting to him. <laughs> um, I'll tell you the same thing at all the... Uh, was it Pontifex? Uh, somebody yeah. took a look at it. Um... There's barely anything left of it besides the wooden frame. It smells mm -hmm. like that creature that you didn't even see. You were busy, uh, but you smelled something uh, going past you, and you heard a commotion. Um, yeah. And there is nothing I... abandoned beneath it or around it. Uh, yeah, I, I remember it's, this. It seems normal. Yeah. But Talix is like just very interested in just looking it over all the same. You, you get a feeling that this might have looked better uh, a long time ago. Uh, it, the, the wood at this point is partially rotten, um, but there's like glimpses of what might have been carvings on its sides at some point, and it, it seems like it was. It actually matched uh, what must have been the, re the rest of this room. All right. So, what are you doing? Sounds like we're uh, we're pressing all these buttons simultaneously. <laughs> did you did you give us a combination or? Do yeah, I... it's, yes, it's, it's like it's written, written on, on the wall, wall next oh, to you. Okay. Yeah, you can you you can all see both halves of this grid. Uh, Pontifex has drawn it on the wall with a magical magical inkwell pen thing, and so there's oh, like see. the diagram that we could see before, and then the other half is in like glowing white ink. So yeah, it's very easy for you to see the, the layout. It points upwards. Hmm. Uh, Pontifex, you press all the buttons simultaneously, and they all stick um, when you let go of them. And you hear a sound of stone grinding against stone, and uh, the door in front of you opens outward. 
You see a staircase leading down and then taking a sharp uh, turn to the left. Well, there we go. Perhaps this is the path to our friend. Um, we should take a small break now. Sure. Oh, it's narrow. Yes. It's not as easy. Is five minutes uh, <laughs> enough? Do you need ten? I'm Stretch okay your legs, with that. get water. Five is good for me. Okay. Alright. Yeah, I'll, right I'll see you there back in five minutes. Their way. We beat the first puzzle, guys. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. The dream puzzle. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys in five minutes. Alright, All see right. ya. Hello? 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 I'm Hello? drinking from a juice box to get in character. <laughs> That's fantastic! No judgment, dude. I have Capri Sun in my fridge. I'm an adult. <laughs> oh man, I wish I had some Capri Sun. It's one of those things where, like, as a kid, Capri Suns are just so amazing. And as an adult, they're just so cheap. Like, yeah. there's no reason to just not have and a fridge. And they're still of so amazing. Yeah, they're so good. I just... I just wish there were some Capri Suns with more volume in it. Like big ones? Because I take one zip and it's empty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so far, um, most of my checks have been with a negative two. <laughs> hey, that's, this, is, uh, this is all in character. Yeah. You're very young. I think most of the checks so far have been like you know, knowledge-related things, which probably comes with age or specialization, <laughs> neither of which I feel Pip has. Yeah, not quite there yet. <laughs> Hello, fabulous people. Hello. Hello. Pip is a baby. Yes. I didn't catch Pontifex that. is so old. <laughs> so old. Very so old. <laughs> Pip shouldn't have called him Pontifex, though. Should have called him Professor. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no, I, I sat behind my desk and I unmuted everything and I was like ready to go and I realized I actually... I filled up my water bottle and I left it in the kitchen! Ah, classic! <laughs> it's a classic. Every time. Or oh, didn't get a knife either. The classic. I, I'm surprised, but pleasantly, that Pip has started speaking so early on. I thought it was going to be like <laughs> session ten. Pip says his first words. His first words. <laughs> yeah. But that would have probably been painful in some ways. So I'm glad he didn't. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, let us continue. The door lies open in front of you. There is uh, a set of staircase that leads down and then takes a left, so that's all you can see. And it is dark, the only source of light still being only Pontifex's staff. I can look ahead. So can bit. Squeak. Squeak, is that your pet's name there? Yeah. Hello, my name's Squeak. <laughs> the, uh, the rat opens its mouth and <laughs> talks. Oh, jeez. What on earth? Oh. It looks like you're, uh, you're talking to animals, but it's contagious. <laughs> this is no, fascinating. I, I don't know. That's, that's not what this is. Squeak could look ahead for us. Okay, so Go ahead, I suppose. Does your little friend need a light? No, he's fine. Uh, squeak, the rat uh, just sort of um, crawls down Pip's arm and then jumps to the floor and then scurries uh, along the cobbles down into the staircase and just starts hopping down each step at a time. And then Pip just sort of stands stock still for a little bit, and you can see if you're looking at his face, his eyes, the pupils just sort of dilate real wide. 
as Pip is going to be seeing through Squeak. Um, through Squeak's eyes, you can see the rat going all the way down the stairs, taking a left, and there's more stairs, and proceeds down uh, in what seems to be sort of... Um, um, it's a bit of a long way, like it would take about a, a, a full minute uh, for a person to get all the way to the other side, and so uh, for for the rat uh, having to uh, climb down each of the steps, it takes just a little bit longer uh, until there is another door in the way of the rat. No fissures through which he could look, and no uh, no keyhole either. It looks just like uh, um, the one yeah you guys have just managed to open. Okay, Pip will. Um cause Squeak to disappear into that pocket dimension and then return on uh, his own shoulder. And uh, Squeak will say, uh, There's another door. Uh, that is not... Uh, what? It's going to take me a moment to be used to this. It Pontifex is gonna like wait. Is is the the squeak like reappeared on Pip's shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think Pontifex is gonna like cra like crane over you and get really close to Squeak's. Face. Uh, squeak will look at you and say, "What are you looking at, Poncho?" Yeah, it's a uh, Pontifex, uh, but a uh, Poncho will work if we're on the friendly nickname level already. Uh, you know, I, I will save my questions for later. <laughs> and he'll stand all the way back up. I'll go over to Brooke and kind of whisper, Is that is that a fae? <clears throat> well, as far as I can tell, it's a rat. Oh, rats don't do that. Well, we're in Ladaria. You don't know everything about Ladaria. Why don't you ask him? I, uh... Later. <laughs> okay, well, let's go. Does Pontifex still have the light? Uh, he does. It's All like right. a, a blue light radiating from the end of his staff. Then I would orientate myself after the light. If uh, you all would like, I can lead, or if someone else would like to take part, I don't want uh, not my Meryl voice to have this exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to each shake uh, all of your minis. I'll go anywhere that's not too close to Pip. <laughs> 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 I think we gotta take him back. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, oh. That was confused. There we go. You don't want your mini to be disintegrated into a million pieces. No, it's just gonna get like packed oh, up with so the cool. rest of this. <laughs> Suck the whole map up. <laughs> um, so Pontifex is leading the way, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. Unless someone yeah. else is uh, is going ahead, he's um. I don't know if anyone else here even knows how the light cantrip works, but if you do, you'd know he can pass it on. If not, then he's totally fine leading the way. <laughs> Probably okay. to his own probably know, detriment. But... Yeah. Figure you might like to lead. Sure. Um, can all of you, as you're following Pont Pontifex down the steps, roll a survival check? Do you want Pontifex to roll as well, or no? Uh, all of you, uh, okay. roll. Haha! <laughs> Dang! <laughs> I've got my old dice back somehow, apparently. <laughs> oh, it's because we all have Dennis's dice. Okay. Um, two Pip and... Come on! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two, 
to Pip and Talix is very obvious and uh, um, Pontifex is also pretty sure of it. It seems like you have gone, uh, based on like how far you walked and the turns you took, it feels like you have ultimately ended up... Uh, um, like the door should be, if you were to open it, it should be about uh, right underneath the room you were just in. Mm. Hmm. Seems there are multiple levels to this. Yeah, we're in a spiral. Who's opening the door? <clears throat> I guess I'm leading. I guess I'll, uh, you know, give it like a, a, a nice little push. Oh wait, no, the last one opened in. He'll give it a nice little pull. Yeah, you you, you test it. Uh, this one does feel like it opens instead of the other one that required uh, something special. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just as you like thought, this, this is exactly the same, uh, not only shape but also size, uh, as uh, the previous room. So it does feel like you have gone down one floor. Um, there is... It's... Uh, uh, where is it? It feels even emptier than the previous room, just utterly abandoned to itself, and also full of the smell, uh, uh, of the same smell as the previous one. There is a presence of another bed that immediately catches your attention, and the door on the left compared from where you're coming from. There's more grasses and roots and vines that creep into this room from outside its walls, uh, seemingly thriving, despite being so far from the sunlight. Uh, Pontifex, as soon as you step into the room, you, you feel one of your feet bumping onto something. And uh, oh. you look down to see a book on the ground. He will uh, start to lean down to pick it up and then like kind of put his hand on his back. We're like, oh, that's a little too far. And he's going to mage hand the <laughs> book up and do his own hand. <laughs> I'd be happy to get up. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, the book looks, compared to everything else in the air, to be in uh, excellent shape, very well taken care of. The cover, um, it, you, you can see just even without opening it that it seems like the cover has been changed a few times around the rest of the papers. So the cover is like brand new, but the notes, some of them are already, uh, some of the pages are already yellowing uh, with age. Oh. Well, we have something here. Uh, I must uh, quell my excitement a little bit. Uh, uh, campaign means we have a book of some sort. I am definitely oh. on it. Open it. Yeah. I'm going to read. Uh, sure. Uh, and he'll, uh, he'll like, kind of crack open the book in his hand and hold the light at the end of his stick up to the book so we can read it clear. Okay. Yeah, he's like uh, holding the book out in one of his big hands, like acting like a podium for Talix. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, just bring I your attention also... over to. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah. I would also look like over their shoulders onto the book. Yeah, of course. For you, that's that's yeah. that's such it's, a simple thing to do. It's that cartoon scene where like we're all like <laughs> shoving our heads together to get on one frame. <laughs> over the book. That's just. I, <laughs> Pontifex will be as accommodating with space as he can. <laughs> I have a meme for this, but uh, later, later. <laughs> okay. Um, you just uh, turn over the cover, and on the very first page, um, you can see some ink, and uh, uh, all of you read this with ease as it's written in uh, Plurnan. All <gasps> it says is, Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. By Jamiel Fleetfoot. <gasps> oh. Her, oh! Professor! Oh my, oh, this is perhaps the first, a pre-first edition. This could be, this could be even the manuscript, the rough draft. Oh! <laughs> He's like, I think his hand is shaking and it's a little harder to read the book. <laughs> professor, that's... Oh, Professor, that's Jamiel. Uh, this, I believe this to be our friend. Uh... I, I have a voucher for a pre-order of this one. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Professor? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. If that's Jamil's... That's... That's his manuscript. This could be his notes. Uh, and Pond Effects is going to like flip through the pages, just like briefly skimming to see is this like a... 
is this like the rough draft like his notes with you know scribbles and stuff in okay it. um yeah after after the moment of excitement and steady <laughs> setting your shaky hand uh oh, hello cat pumpkin says hi um hello <laughs> you flip the first page and you know like the the uh, behind the one that acts like a title the next one is blank uh, which feels pretty normal but then you check the next one and then the next one and the next one and despite how old this paper is and now it seems like it's it's it has seen use it has seen travel the pages are all blank what oh oh the plot thickens Seems our friend may have, uh, wanted to hide his notes. Smart of him. Really Looking well. around, are there any other sorts of things that may have been left behind here? Roll an investigation check. It's not gonna be good, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip seems uh, to not make an attempt to read a book, uh, uh with with Ross View and he says starts poking around, you hear him uh his very, very light <laughs> footsteps around the room, uh checking under bed, moving near the door. Um you you leave him to his own devices for now, but uh Pip for the time being you're not finding mm -hmm. any trace of uh, just occasionally you just catch a stronger whiff of that unpleasant smell and it's mainly around the bed, but uh, um nothing else that seems to have been left behind in here. Talix is now looking at anything but this book right now. Uh, he kind of like gestures holding out his palms. Professor, please, with your permission, may I? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, no before you can do anything, nope. um, it's you, you just have the book open on like a random page, uh, um, uh, yeah. just as blank as the others. And uh, uh, as you're like in the process of handing it to him, you do, he, he doesn't even reach Talix's hands, and he starts to see splotches of ink appearing <laughs> on the pages. I throw oh. my hands back. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got it. <laughs> and he'll, he'll bring his staff like closer to it. What is this? And then the ink uh, moves across the page, uh, back and forth, just leaving a trail everywhere it goes. And eventually it forms uh, into one legible word in Plurnon in white. If I can get it. All right, here we go. <gasps> it says type here. <laughs> 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 What? What? Everyone! What? Everyone come see this! What indeed? <laughs> Pip runs over and just starts trying, like, hopping up off of the ground trying to see the pages from all these tall people reading it. Oh, yeah, uh, sure, yeah, uh, by your curiosity, and he'll, uh, ah! he'll sit down a little bit, he'll, like, kind of lower himself using his staff and sit, like, legs crossed with the book out so everyone can see. I'm like... Just... Are these, like, materializing? Yeah. Like, over time? Yep. As I'm writing oh. them, that's how they appear. What is... Oh... Oh, this is very intriguing. I have a... I made a specific study over things like this. I... I believe perhaps this is what we call the, the, the college an awakened book. Uh, there is a consciousness, a sentience in it, perhaps. A consciousness? Uh, yes, uh, it appears it is self-aware to an extent. Uh, mm. uh, Mr. Book, uh, can you understand us? Can you communicate with words? Here, let me try this. Uh, perhaps Alex not. is very much invading your personal space right now, like just... Ah, there we go. Trying to, like, is not even believe in personal space. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It appears it can hear us. Oh, damn. It's in the awakened book. I, like... <clears throat> I stand up and, like walk in a circle around the room and then circle right back and shove my face <laughs> up to the roof again. 
Oh, oh this dear. is nostalgic. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I haven't seen one of these in decades. Yes, hello, hello from all hello. of us. Do you do you have a name? Yes, indeed it is. <clears throat> Isn't this incredible? Yes, this these are... Uh... Book. This was Jamiel's book. Yes, I believe this would make more sense. His guide is... alive. Uh, you see the ink sort of uh, uh, moving over to the edge of the page after having written in, um, like I like I put it here, it, it wasn't all in the same line. It was just occupying yeah. different places to the page. Some some words were bigger, some were smaller. Uh, and it, you see it reach the end of the page and then uh, sort of clinging onto oh. the side of it. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and he'll like thumb the edge of it. He'll like, you know, lick the end of his thumb and turn the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you flip it, and then uh, the ink collects itself uh, onto the next page and begins to form more words. Shamuel oh. Fleetfoot. That would make sense. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, I hope not. Perhaps this is not an awakened spellbook in the traditional sense. This is more of a uh, phylactery. A what? Uh, stuff is this is a housing for. Uh, uh, it depends on who you ask. Uh, the soul, the spirit, the thing that makes you who you are, the thing that inhabits this husk we call bodies. Uh, phylactery is sort of like a device to house those things. Uh, but their existence is uh, debated. Hold on, he's writing. Yes, a body. Why indeed? Do you have no memories? Yes, I can imagine. Professor, this is terrible. Well, it could be terrible, or you could see it from a more positive standpoint. Uh, Souls in a book! Well, <clears throat> you are hoping to find this Jamuel in search of answers, and what better way to get answers than when you can read him like a book? Also, we don't know yet if that is actually true. Well, uh, if you all are, would permit me to hazard a, a jab at this magically... Pontifex is going to cast Attack Thoughts on the book. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This is my last casting of this. Yeah, I was gonna say, Professor, you're burning all, all three of your energy here, aren't you? Oh, this is... Yeah, there is nothing worth the energy like this. This is fascinating. Okay. <laughs> perhaps a friend has uh, fuzzy thoughts. Perhaps I can... Uh, you know, communicate with him before he can make the words. People's minds tell very a lot of things, and he's gonna probe the fuck out of this book. <laughs> For the duration, you can read the thoughts of certain creatures. This book is not a creature. Mm. You don't feel the spell, um, like, latching onto its target. 
you don't feel like it's because the book has any special properties. You just feel your spell failing, like spells do when their conditions aren't properly met. Hmm. It, so? it appears he is not susceptible to such things. Well, we can just communicate like this. Pardon me, Mr. Fleetfoot, if it is you. Do you have any awareness of where you are right now? You can see. We don't either. You might run into more of those things from, you know, like the one we saw. On effects will turn the page if need be. Hmm? Do you think that's what happened to him? I mean... That one looked scared, but maybe if there were more... They weren't normal Adar- it wasn't a normal Adarian. The- was... the- the creature that ran past us before, how tall did you say it was? Like About five, five feet? feet, yeah. Okay, and we know Jamil is a halfling, right? Uh, yeah, Jamil would be shorter okay. than that. Okay. Ask him if he slept in the bed. Faster. Um, you said one asking? Or if, oh, I, like, I thought I assumed be, Because he said him. ask him, so I was just waiting for it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, you can hear him. I can talk to you telepathically, <laughs> not out loud. <laughs> oh, you're speaking telepathically? Mm hmm. Oh. Oh, you've been using the stone this whole time. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay, oh. I thought you've been speaking out loud. A squeak spoke just out loud. Pimp yeah, has been right. only telepathically. I got you. Uh, then yeah, I guess. Uh, my little friend here is wondering: Did you sleep in the bed before this? We are talking about this bed and not the one back upstairs. Right? We better? Well, I would assume so. I mean... It was the way forward last time, but... I also don't want to turn into a book. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against no. books, of course, but... I can think of worse fates. Oh. Upon reading that, Brooke would take a closer look around, see if something was hiding, if there's a place to hide. Okay. I don't know, check the ceiling. Yeah, Talix is definitely gonna like fumble around and try to get his shield back up and ready again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, roll investigation. <clears throat> I have some kind of odd key that's sort of like getting in the way of me typing and keeps popping up the chat. Um, but... Yeah, you need to rebind your chat key. My chat... No, it, like, it's popping up a message that's, like, something got copied to the clipboard. But it only oh, happens yeah. when I might be yeah, typing. You before. Yeah, uh, probably... probably V, right? Wait. Yeah. Okay. C, I mean. Hold on. <laughs> C. A. Y. X. C. T. R. Is it shift C? Jamil saying oh, some really weird D. stuff now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, letter T. <laughs> it's uh, the generative. His mind is slipping into the abyss. <laughs> Pontifex. No, not Pontifex. Sorry, that's uh, that's Brooke uh, that was looking around. Mm -hmm. Um. As you as you poke around and just make sure that there's nothing bad around here. Um, mm -hmm. You do see an inscription on this wall over in this direction. Oh, that doesn't work. Here. 
Ah, there it is. Um, that again, you can catch some words of it, but not all of them. Which are the ones I can catch? Uh, you had a natural 20 earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, the ones you understand are Guard, Waking World, Scene, Sleep. Guard, Waking World, Scene, Sleep. Is that Scene, S-E-E-N, or a C E N? Guard, Waking World, Scene, Sleep. Do you think that means that while one of us sleeps, someone needs to stand guard? That would be in line with what this book said. How many of you are checking on the writing? The the writing on the wall or the one game on in the, the book? On the wall. Oh, no, Pontifex is completely absorbed in oh. the book. Okay. All right. For the, followed, Brooke. for the purposes of being helpful to Alex Hull, mm. <laughs> fairly go up here. What is Tekka up to? Uh, Tekka is investigating the moss that's growing on the stones here, and is scraping some off. Okay. Uh, you can roll a nature check. Alright. I mean, we could try sleeping again. Okay, um... To your knowledge, Tekka, um, the moss that you're currently collecting uh, can be used, so not in its current state, it would take some work, but uh, you're pretty sure that this is uh, a basic component uh, uh, in a particular kind of salve that uh, uh, is meant to be applied over open wounds that helps them not get infected. Very good. Uh, the rest of you, well, besides Pontifex, uh, as you're checking the writing, um, the entirety of the words that all of you put together can understand are They guard Waking world Only be seen When you sleep <sighs> I'd like to go back to the book. <laughs> Seems our friend has went silence for a while. Excuse me, uh, when you were here, did you come alone? Yep. And uh, what happened to your traveling party? Turn the page. <laughs> Only be seen when you sleep. We need to walk in there. Walk in there the way Tekka did. All of us should go sleep. Well, I'm not sure if it'll work with all of us, but... I think if we walk in there in person, something's gonna happen. And read this. So what you're saying is one of us goes there asleep and the others go there awake. Correct? No, anyone who goes in there awake is gonna have something bad happen, right? Oh. Maybe we just... Tekka, you seem to sleep easily. Can you do that again? What if something oh. happens? Oh. I'm okay to go with him. If we have, like, more than one space. If it I works with two people. I'm able to monitor you this time. 
We can communicate, right? Through the stones, yeah. Yes. I am willing to take the risk. Yeah, I'll, I'll join you. If that works. I think as long as you're sleeping in that bed, you're safe. Uh, hold on, our friend here has a request of us. Uh, yes, what? Of course, I will... Uh... Uh, he's going to look to the rest of the group. Seems our friend here the book wishes to be brought farther in. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. It is all the same to you all. I suppose I will keep him safe. Hmm. I do not understand this book. You seem to know more. Oh, there's so much I need to ask you. Just be wary of that book. We still don't know for sure if that actually is Jemuel. Of Can course, you... it seems the book itself does not know if it is Jemuel. Where's his dog? His sheep dog. Oh, I forgot he had a ship. There's the dog who produced wool. Hmm. There was a harness outside. Perhaps oh that was for the dog. I can only imagine getting a dog down in here in the first place. With, unless, of course, he had magic such as mine. But I do not believe a sheep dog is a uh, disposition towards climbing. No, it was lowered. Tech is right. That wasn't a normal climbing harness. Right. Well, well regardless uh, of uh, if you trust the book man or not, I uh, don't believe this changes our original intentions. If it were not for the book, we would be trying to progress all the same. And I would like to remind you all we are on a bit of a timer. Um, this place is only accessible at the lowest tide. Should the tide rise too much, it would flood these caverns. Uh, I would be fine, but unless you all can hold your breath for a long time, I believe it is best that we expedite this a little bit. All right. Fine. You're right. Then do I carry this or not. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe it will go with him. He is asking. Ah. Oh. It's Alex Moyer. It's... It's an honor if it is you, sir. Uh, I never thought I'd be meeting you like this, obviously. My name is Teka. I have been seeking you. Rook. Rook Hayatep. Nice to meet you, I guess. Rook <clears throat> kind of looks across the room towards Pip. You can tell him my name. Is uh, my young friend here would like to introduce himself as Pip, um, and I am uh, Pontifex Vas Dalus Alenak. Um, you may call me Pontifex or Professor, as people seem to do. Uh, regardless of whether this is truly Jemuel or if this is something else. I am uh, equally as delighted to meet you. Yes, likewise. Obviously. 
All right, Tekka, are you, do you want to s try to sleep by yourself? Should I try to join you? Whatever guards there, if it's dangerous. We are on limited time, and uh, Tekka stands in front of Pontifex. Hand me the book. Brooke, we shall try this together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Um, Pontifex will uh, will turn the page to a fresh page um, in case it needs to talk more and then hand the book over. <laughs> <laughs> How big is a bed? Because of, <laughs> if it's Twin is it big enough for me? You've got a spoon. Yep. Got you a see it's it's a <laughs> It I'm is big know. enough where, like, if two people wanted to sleep in it, they could. And if you wanted to really squeeze, you, would, you could even fit three. But it doesn't seem like it accounted for somebody as big as Brooke, so, like, his feet would dangle off of one, one end. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Someone's big dipper. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Taker, just be aware. I'm not sure if I'll be able to fall asleep as fast as you did. That uh, is okay. And Tekka lies down on the stones. Okay, and you're holding the book? Yeah. And it's open on the page that Pontifex left it on? On the new page, yeah. Okay. I'll make it comfortable in the bed. Um, <laughs> excuse me, Brooke, if you'd, be, if you'd be comfortable with it, I could maybe say a little prayer and help ease your mind of it. Sure. It's not going to be as uh, direct as... Pontifex's methods, but well, I'm gonna just clutch the pouch in my side without taking anything out and whisper a few words to Vakanath and cast guidance on Brooke. I don't, in case there's like a sleep check he can make, it's gonna help him. <laughs> hmm. The book asks if yes. it can do anything. To help. I believe we are just to solve the problems at hand and well the book is to accompany us if there's any advice or insight you can give us it would be appreciated otherwise I think, I think we will just proceed as planned hopefully yeah. you get taken along with whoever's carrying you however uh, that works. before I Go to sleep, I would take out my blade. And the blade is basically just silver metal. Seems to be unscratched. Or not much scratched at all. Okay, so the ones who are sleeping is Teka, Teka and, <clears throat> and Brooke? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Alright. Um, and Teka is holding the book, and the book is held open so you all can see uh, the open pages. Uh, are Talix and Pip doing anything in particular while this happens? Pontifex too? Uh, probably watching the pages and otherwise... Yeah, Pontifex just... is staring at the book. Yeah, just kind of taking the occasional look around, <laughs> seeing if I notice anything happen. We're all looming <laughs> over Brook and Tekka and being like, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> just watching them intently staying you... on the other side of the bed as Talix and, and the professor <laughs> oh. mm, that's comfortable <laughs> the standard furbolg sleeping position <laughs> for like those that know, <laughs> you see that Tekka seems a lot more awake than last time so uh, and you see him uh, Weka is sleeping on the stones by the way make that clear okay oh yeah uh and you can see Tekka taking out a leaf from his bag and putting it in his mouth and you can see him chewing, chewing on it can i just say that my mini looks dead yeah. Okay. Uh, for Tech, it takes a bit longer uh, 
for him to fall asleep compared to before, but it's still an, Im an impressive, um, just very, very quick, uh, um, very short amount of time uh, uh, to fall asleep. And uh, like before, you feel yourself eventually um, sit up uh, and stand up uh, and uh, not really seeing the figures of your, of your companions anymore. Uh, and you don't feel the grip uh, on the book either. You see it when you look back and you see your own body uh, clutching the book, but you don't feel like you're holding on to it or its essence uh, uh, in this state. And besides the occasional glimpses of shadows near you, you see it too, uh, a bit more clearly, um, especially with you being a little on edge and making sure to just glance around the room. Uh, and they are in front of the door one and then the other just there flickering like flames but uh, colorless uh Tenka will sort of walk side to side trying to keep the distance to the door mm -hmm. uh, Rook, you're still you're still awake <laughs> it's gonna take you a while going mm -hmm. and Tekka will say book can you hear me? Um, all of you hear this in your heads, mm. but uh, no words form on the book. I'm gonna walk over to where the book is and look at the pages. Uh, I, I think he's in. Are you here or there? I am there. There is something by the door. Like... It seems our friend Jemuel is unable to accompany you. Yes. Take a I... We'll move towards the door. What, what did you see, Tekka? Like flames. I can't take them out. Hmm. Seems if we wanted to take Jamul in there, it'd have to be in person, and that might get us in some trouble. Will forgive my uh, presumptuousness, but I had assumed that we were intending to enter deeper ourselves and not in a dream. I respect the magic at work here, but I would prefer to encounter these things firsthand. I suppose I do too. Leave the risk is simply part of the game. Dreams are important. Give me time. Sure. Just, you know, don't take too long. Enough for the tides to change. Uh, and Tekka will approach the door. Okay. Um, how close do you get? Um, maybe a two meters distance. Okay, so you're like about to to step uh, in between uh, um, the two locations where you felt fl uh, you, you spotted flickers of shadows, and you see them suddenly uh, sort of zap towards you. Um, it, it's just, it's really fast, it's like a flash, uh, but you feel them, uh, um, touch you, and, uh, um, you're, you move out of the way just instinctively, and so you only felt like a pinch, and it was painful, uh, but it was for only a moment. You think that, uh, uh perhaps this could, this would hurt more if you weren't this quick on your feet. A, a warning. The, these are guardians. I cannot approach without what, getting hurt. With what are the guardians? Give us a, a better explanation. We cannot see what you see. I... Like... Strange apparitions of color and light. 
just like your silhouettes, I cannot quite make them out. But the moment I approach, they strike. Are they in this room? They stand guarding the door. Bonifex is going to leave the book and head towards the door. Okay. How close do you get? Um, heading towards it, I guess. As close as I can get until something happens or okay, if nothing yeah. happens. You make it like right about in front of it until you feel something um, hitting you. And you didn't, you didn't see anything. Uh, there was no sound, but you felt something lashing uh, against you. And in your case... The armor class is 16, right? Correct. Do you have a way to uh, reduce the damage? Or... Uh, if this is elemental damage, yes. Um, otherwise, I don't I don't think he would have like the reflexes, frankly, to shield this in time. But if it's elemental damage of some sort, then yes. Okay. Uh, in which case, you feel... Well, you take a total of 5 slashing damage. Uh, from seemingly nothing. You just feel something hitting your armor and opening uh, a gash into your skin, and you're bleeding. You said five? Yes. Professor! Oh, I, he's gonna, like, stumble back. Did Tekka yeah. see something happen just then? Um, Yes! Tekka saw them, again, reaching forward almost as if for him, but not quite. It seems the hostilities are not on you just your end. Uh, but Pontifex, uh, it felt like a ten something tangible, like yeah. uh, physical. It wasn't anything uh, like psychic. Um, and it's slashing damage. Do I have like a physical mark on my yeah. on my clothing or something? Yes. Is it like a single slash mark? Is it like multiple, like a claw? Like it's a what's single the... slash mark. It disappears. I was struck. Um, a single edge, maybe a sword of some sort. Uh, but it was, it was real. That was impact. You... Something we cannot see. Do you need me to attend to it? I can, uh, you know, I can heal if you need. Are you okay? Uh... I believe I am. I will suffice. I am okay. I will just proceed with more caution. Brook, uh, you are asleep by now. And, uh, um, well, you see, you, you see yourself rising up from the bed, not really seeing any of the others, but you do see Tekka near the door, uh, looking normal. And Tekka, you can see Brooke as well. <clears throat> Do I see the figurines? Figures? In front of the door, yeah. Wow. You see them too, Brooke. I do. This is impressive. Yes. What do they do? I believe they protect. I can confirm they protect. <laughs> huh. Is there any chance you two can do anything in there? Um, let's see. Um, Tekka will look to where the inscription was in the reverse, see if there's any more detail. I'm guessing... Okay, um, can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, on the wall where the inscription was, Tech is gonna look in the dream oh, yes. state. See if there's um, the writing feels strange. Uh, you're trying to, like, you're, um, narrowing your eyes and trying to, like, would you get the writing into focus, but it all just feels, uh, uh it's like it's smudged. Nothing is in focus. Nothing here is clear. I'm a, I'm a bit remiss to suggest this, but I'm beginning to suspect 
that we might have to fight these spirit things. Okay, then a joint attack from both sides. They should be right by the door. So I can confirm their location personally. Um, Pontifex is actually looking towards the ground. Uh, is there any um, uh, any signs of like the ground being disturbed or anything like that? Like being actively disturbed? Are you trying to see if you're seeing like marks in the in the dirt? Yeah, like things that are appearing like as as he's looking at it to see if there's if they're impacting the world outside of them in any other way. Um or knowing like if he's holding up his light, if they're casting a shadow of some kind, just any way to perceive them. Mm -hmm. Knowing where to look and uh, uh, knowing what to expect. Uh, uh, while you do not see any shadows being cast that should not be there, you do notice every once in a while some uh, just some dirt being displaced ever so slightly. Yes, Telex, look there at the floor. If you look closely, you can see where they are. They're physically here. They're just not. I have something to this. I'm going to take off my backpack. <laughs> if you notice that there's some writing in a book uh, that wasn't there before. Uh, you too. Go ahead. Uh, that's all. I am going just watch to you. Take out my little. Uh, a little hard case with some grooming supplies in it. And I've got some shaving powder in there. I'm going to throw that in the air in the vicinity of those two. Shaving cream? <laughs> shaving cream. Hell yeah, no, you just home alone, these people. <laughs> it's a very fine powder that sticks to skin pretty easily, so it should, uh, should see yeah, some. I love it. Okay. Uh, roll an attack roll with uh, an improvised weapon. Uh, I, I think in your case that will just be dexterity without proficiency. Uh, this would be more like an area of effect kind of thing, but okay. Uh, um, so I, I can is that remember. like an actual item? Yeah, or... Um... <laughs> Maybe not. Might just might have just wasted all of my stuff. All your shaving cream. I just I, I'm like, way over here for some reason. Well, and if you look at the ground where Pontifex is telling you, you can kind of see at least where they are, sort of, as they're disturbing the floor every now and then. Yeah, I was just hoping to make it a bit easier, but it's not gonna. Um, you see the air displacing a bit of uh, that powder, uh, sticking to something for just a split second and then going away. Uh, the powder falls to the ground, but you do see where uh, there are markings being drawn in the ground now. Uh, just moving back and forth, not really footprints, it's more like um, just lines being drawn uh, as if... As if as if whatever was standing on that spot was just uh, um, round and no more than a couple of inches wide. And it's just shifting right and left and forward and backward without any particular um, order. Jamuel says you should be able to destroy them and hit them. Uh, I suppose that's what we're going to have to do. Right. right. Take the left. I don't I know how much help I will be. Uh, most of what I can do that is dangerous requires something I can see. We'll strike from our side. Maybe that is enough. All right. I'm going to preemptively uh, clutch my stuff in both hands and just say I'm gonna reach into my pouch as well and so I guess one hand and I'm just going to uh, call out to Pakanoth 
Bakunath, I know I'm distant, but I need your power here. Oh, help protect us. And I'm going to cast Shalele. Shalele? Yes. Shalele? Shalele. Ah, Shalele. Of course. Yeah. Pip is going to use his, his magic. He's going to uh, reach down to the pouch at his side and just grab a few pebbles. And um, as he's touching them, is going to just uh, whisper a few words uh, under his breath. Um, in some different tongue and cast magic stone on them. And then he pulls out a slingshot and loads one in. Okay. Real quick, he's standing in front of the left one, readying his sword, waiting on a signal for Tekka to strike. Mm -hmm. You two can take your minis for this and just place them. Um, we have been playing for three hours and a half. It's, uh... oh, we gotta do the combat. Come <laughs> on. Right? Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, Are you let's all do good? it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess while everyone else is getting ready, Pontifex is readying a, uh, a spell, just a cantrip, to because I think it requires me to actually be able to see them. So in the event that anything comes into view, uh, he's going to cast a cantrip at them. All right. Awesome. We lost. We lost in. We lost him. Oh my god! <laughs> Not like this. Um. Uh. <laughs> so we time it for a simultaneous strike then. Mm -hmm. On three, we strike. One, two, three. Roll initiative. All right. You will all get one full free round, but first we need to make sure that we that Austin is back to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. So, the tools we have used for initiative last time are a little different now. Um, the place where you need to put it in after after you've uh, uh, rolled for it, you just click on your menu, you bring up the menu. And uh, at the very bottom, the second option from the bottom, it's called initiative value. Write in uh, whatever you have rolled. And that's all you have to do. Mine is pretty good. Hello. Oh, there Hello. you are. Hi. Hello. Hello. Pip just died all of a sudden. <laughs> no. Heart attack! And he was only 12. Uh, we all rolled initiative, that's what you missed. Oh, crap. Yeah, we had a countdown of um, 3, 2, 1, and everyone basically attacked simultaneously. Um, oh. Every, I everyone besides Pontiac. And we haven't made any attack rolls or anything, oh. but oh, it's okay. the countdown before we act, and then that's when we're going to roll initiative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, roll initiative. Yeah, you uh, you have to input your in your initiative a little differently. You have to right click your little health bar thing, and then at the bottom there's an initiative value, and just change the number to your initiative roll. Okay. Uh, you got to right click your health from like the front. I don't think it works from the back. Yeah, it only works from and the front. And change initiative, initiative value to your initiative roll. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, which I do. Oh no. How do I change the value? I don't even. Are you looking Just at click, the front? Click the front? Oh, it's. Oh, there it is. Isn't there a way to make it detect our rolls and then put automatically? Like, you've already got our initiative mods in there. I know, but uh, for player character, is, uh, the, the mod maker wants for the players to roll oh. initiative manually because it's like. Ah, like as a principle, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. But NPCs do work like that for me. Uh, I mm. only put in the the modifier, and then uh, um, when initiative begins. Okay, you no, won't I don't put see in your else. Right, I don't see anyone else's either. Uh, I yeah, put mine I in there. My own. Okay, well let's mine. see. Let's see if it works. If I just click this. I've heard it's only. Yep. Oh, hey, it worked. 
Okay. We have black names. Uh, yeah, some of you have set uh, your outline, I guess. Which... There we go. Um, it's those colors on the right side of your... Mm. Oh, oh, I, I pressed that by accident. Pip, and then off... Dup, 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 you're putting it back! I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought... You're green you now! To set our colors? Oh, well, if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, abso yeah absolutely. Cool. Nice, that makes it, uh, makes initiative a lot more legible. Oh, How do I do the colors? Um, it's this, all the color things on the right. You just click one. Yeah, looks like we all got it. Wait, are you seeing it on the right? No, I assume that you have to, like, reinitiate. Oh. Yeah, no, refreshing character. it is not setting your colors, uh, but, uh, uh, for next time, it will be. Yeah. Alright. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. Uh, question. Do you see this health bar? Uh, no. Nope. nope. Wonderful. <laughs> We're already doing some, like, interplanar stuff. Yeah. I like. We're doing some high-level stuff here. Some, uh, astral plane stuff happening. I was feeling more Shadowfell, but I'm not sure. Or that. I'm just thinking invisibility. I was thinking um, not, not astral plane, plane, um, ethereal plane. That's what yeah. I meant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I know more than I do. Got some shady boys. So everybody is going to attack simultaneously. So we're just going to resolve this in initiative order. And these creatures will not uh, retaliate. And then we'll, mo we'll move on from there. Also, just need 10 seconds to pick up a thing. I'm actually glad I rolled low on initiative. Uh, did I spy a minus three on initiative? That is correct. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. My yeah, dexterity like, oh my score god. is a four. Not the modifier, oh the score. Oh god. Oh no. He is very old. Ah! I, uh, I believe I probably miss. Was that loud? Yes. <laughs> you have to reset your volume every time? Yep. Oh. Apparently. Not me. Huh. All, oh, because you logged back in, maybe. Right. Huh. Sorry, okay. In, I, see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I missed with my stick swing. Yeah, a seven I, uh, will not hit. I swing with my enchanted staff and feel nothing but air. It is indeed a little difficult uh, to figure out where they are, but because of the powder on the ground uh, and mainly the, the link between uh, your, your mind and those of uh, of the of your companion who can see them, um, what that basically means is that the disadvantage is cancelled out. Uh, so yeah, it is a straight attack roll, but in your case, it was uh, still quite not enough. Is there anything else in your turn that you'd like to do? Um. Oh, everything's. Uh, how do I? There we go. Sorry, I'm still figuring out D and D Beyond. Um. <laughs> There's... Okay, I'm going to do a little something, since okay. this is a bonus action. I'm once again going to, uh... Let's just say that at this point, I'm, I've got my shield strapped to my arm, and my left hand I'm going to be holding that orb. And, uh... I'm going to whisper one more little prayer of protection, just for myself, and I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself. Just because I'm expecting that, uh... Something might be trying to hurt me very soon. Okay. If the, uh, no, big there might be just a little, uh, a little glow from the orb and uh, maybe some kind of shimmering dust around me, but not much else that's visible. Let's see. Okay. I see. All right. So I had to just look at look up the spell description. Okay. In that case, we're gonna move on to Pip. All right, uh, Pip uh, draws back on the slingshot. He has one of his magic stones loaded into it. It's this this sort of uh, rough, uh, irregular, rusty red chunk of uh, like an iron ore, and he he just slings it to the right of the door and sees if he can hit something with it. Okay, roll your attack roll. An 18 will hit. 
Okay. That's gonna be... Eight points of magical bludgeoning damage. Um, and then Pip uh, has a couple more stones in his hand, and he uh, hands one out to the professor, uh, this light bluish gray uh, rectangular dolomite rock, and just says, H Here, you can throw this if you want. <laughs> okay, yeah, he'll take it, sure. <laughs> That's it. Um, so all of you just saw us stone being uh, flung onto um, towards the door and not hitting the wall but instead of stopping sort of midair like it hit something and then bouncing back away um, for for tech for Tekka and Brooke you would have seen some this uh, uh, shadowy figure um, become a bit more visible for a moment like it flickered uh, further into existence, and you saw it recoil. Um, then moving on. Oh, hey, I can move the thing. Hold on. Oop, oop. Oh, hey, don't stop dating. Hey. Rook. Okay, do I have an action or an action and a bonus action? Do you have something that gives you a bonus action? Mm, I... You always have a bonus action if you have something that gives you, that uses your bonus action. So I can. Yes, you have a bonus action. Yes. All right, nice, cool. Um, before Rook slashes the uh, thing in front of him, he will <clears throat> slash on the uh, cloth part of his glove, and as soon as. Uh, Light draws blood from himself, it starts glowing completely. And for you, Winter, that is the Ride of the Dawn. Mm -hmm. I roll a d4, I think. Take one damage. I can't get the plus and minus thing on the sides. Here you go. Ooh. You just have to collect the right side of the bars to make it appear. Oh, okay. All right. And then I slash with my action the shade, or whatever it's called. Shade one. Mm hmm. <laughs> Is that a natural oh. one? <laughs> ah, my heart. <laughs> oh, that is. Flashbacks to the last three years. No, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my turn. What, what was the damage die on that? Out of curiosity. Uh, the damage die. Yeah, what did you roll there to get that natural one? Uh, in d20 plus oh d4. Okay, all of us clear. <laughs> if you mean the first one or the second? No, no, the what, the one you rolled the yeah the second one. Oh, that's damage. a d twenty plus sec. What? That was only to hit, not to. Yeah, I meant I meant for. Oh, that was your attack roll. My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, attack. Right, that's it. Foolish. All right. Uh, oh, hey, get the card to work. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Nice. Tega grasps his quarterstaff, stretches forward, and strikes right to left. Let's see if it hits. Nineteen hits. Nice. All right. You swing your staff from side to side, certain that if there is something in there, you're going to feel it. Boom! <laughs> Striking. <laughs> Top half of the shade. Uh, you see, like a puff of the uh, the, the powder that. Uh, um, oh, actually, for you, you didn't even see it where it came from, but you do see some like 
whitish dust just lift uh, off in the, in the air where you you made contact, uh, and these these shadows that are in uh, sort of a in a, in a in a shape as big as a human, uh, they just writhe around in almost pain. Uh, and making use of the movement, he continues spitting, and with his leg, he's gonna strike on the bottom half, trying to trip it over. Um, Does that work? Is that still against armor class? Uh, yeah. Then yes, that is a hit. Nice. All right, let's see. We're only taking twice. It's a bonus action. It's a monk. Yeah. That's crazy. And um, that's a seven. While you have um, acted upon whatever training you have, um, your attempt to trip, um, it feels like this is not something that can fall over. But uh, uh, the, the force of your head is still enough to just disperse it. <sighs> wow. Uh, and Tekka will just slam one end of his poor staff on the stones as he pinches it back. Pontifex? Uh, so one of them was just dispersed, right? Uh, yeah. It... Okay. It um, may not be then... too obvious, but you do. You have been keeping tra uh, track of those signs and the dust on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like you're not really seeing anything moving anymore. On that in that area, okay. Like I would expect to see, like I don't know, not footprints, but like marks on the ground after it being hit twice, like from recoil. Yeah, and there's but you, just you not just, anything. There's nothing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, then Pondifex is going to. Uh, I'm gonna bonus action um, healing word on Brook. Uh, he's gonna like uh, hold out his hand, and the the little goat amulet on his necklace is gonna lo like levitate a little bit and just have a quick like flash. Um, and he gets healed. Um, I don't even need to roll the die. This is one hit point. Um, but you get to make an attack of opportunity on anything within reach. Brooke. Hey! Because I'm an order domain cleric, so I've cast a spell on you. You can take an opportunity attack. Let's go! Curiosity. We still see them in the bed, yeah? So would he just oh. be casting it? True. On him on the bed? Oh, yeah, I forgot that I can't actually see Brook and Tekka. Um, then I guess he would do it on Talix. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's okay. Uh, I wasn't sure if you could cast it on them on the bed and that would work or not. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't even... Pond effect doesn't even know that you're actually there. In fact, he didn't even see the thing be hit by a quarterstaff or a kick. <laughs> None of that actually happened. He's just so yeah. I think it would make the most sense if he does it on uh, on Talix, right. um, or Pip. Either way, it actually doesn't matter. Um, I guess we'll do it on Talix. He's traveled with Talix the most. Sure. So I take it an attack of opportunity. Yeah, you can you can make an attack as a reaction against something you know okay. in, in, within range. Oh, die! Oh oh oh. Okay. Occasional stutters are my fault. Uh, any chance that I can see hits. this one? Okay. Nice. All right. I've I've kind of uh, after my last big miss, I kind of called in like, Tekka, uh, where do I need to go from here and take this chance? Um, right. So plus. I will be dealing, and this is a magical weapon. Uh, seven bludgeoning. Okay. And uh, I guess as he makes impact, uh, Pontifex is kind of watching where his staff goes. Or what is it? What's your weapon that you're hitting him with? Is uh, it your walking it's, stick? It's a big walking stick, but it, yeah, it's. He's like medically... watching his uh, his walking stick trace through the air until it impacts something, and like right where he knows something is, he's gonna cast uh, Toll the Dead. Uh, at that exact spot. Let's see if it works. 
Um, it specifies a creature that I can see within range. So if it doesn't work, then it just doesn't work. That's fine. Okay. Uh, describe what it looks like, but you will you will indeed not be uh, rolling damage on this one. Um, I think whenever he uh, he tries to cast a spell in that direction, um, the oh yeah, you can totally hear like the sound of like a goat braying from uh, from his <laughs> amulet, and uh, and then nothing happens. <laughs> he tried his best. <laughs> uh, Pip is the first Should time you're hearing. <laughs> Pip, this is the first time you're hearing the sound of an animal, and you don't understand. What? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even sound like? <laughs> sounds like a goat brain, yeah. but it's very, like, echoey and uh, not, like, I don't know, very supernatural sounding. <laughs> Pip just, like, steps a, <laughs> a step back. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, and I think that's it. Back at the top of the initiative, Talix. All right. Well, had success so far, so I'm gonna try again. To maybe even now that I've got a better idea of where this thing is, I'm gonna go here and just take another swing for now. Yeah, that's how I roll. Yeah, let's go. That is a hit. <laughs> let's go. Oh. Five bludgeoning. Uh-huh. And... Yeah, I think I'm just going to hold off on that. I'm trying to save my strength a little bit. I'll just leave it at that for now. Stay close. Hold on. Um, I think something happened. Yeah, I'm missing one. Alright, I need to be more careful with that. Okay! That means so it's back to Pip. Uh, as soon as Talix moves away and steps in the other direction, Pip just sort of like, he sort of puts his tongue through his teeth and concentrates and tries to, to aim at wherever that dust is sort of moving around and will uh, try and fire one more time with the slingshot with his last magic stone. Okay. Eighteen is a hit. All right, and that'll be five points. Once more, the pebble getting caught uh, into something midair, and then after a moment, plopping down to the ground. Anything else on your turn? I think that's it. Okay. Actually, for a bonus action, he'll reach down and just make three more pebbles magical. Sure. Uh, in which case, this uh, uh, entity, or Brook and Tekka, you just see these uh, slithering uh, strands of shadow moving around and then uh, enveloping themselves, one around Talix and one around Brook. Um, Talix, a five will not hit. Also, it needed to make a wisdom saving throw before targeting me. Oh, that's right! Oh, Does yeah. the sanctuary just last um, until you attack? Wait, no, it goes away when you oh, attack. Oh, you're right, I attacked! Yeah. Oh, that's right. You've attacked a bunch. I thought I was forgetting something. Do we have Oops. sanctuary here on the markers? No. No. Sadness, we'll have to faith. make one. Alright. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, totally either way, yeah, I had a, f a 5 to hit. And then I have a 21 to hit Brook. Does that hit? For a total of 7. Slashing damage. Seven. Mm hmm. Um. Hmm. And that's all it does. It doesn't move, uh, bound to stay in that place, no matter what. So, Brook, your turn. All right. I'll try to take another swing at it. Go for it. Ah, 24 is a hit. All right. Now the fun part starts. Mm 
That is 14 damage. Let me check which of that is radiant. I'm not sure if it makes my whole attack radiant. Uh, it's just the additional damage. Yep. Then it's... <laughs> the one radiant damage. <laughs> <laughs> So as this group of mostly strangers all comes together to fight off these uh, uh, barely visible shadows, uh, how would you all wor like to work together to land a final hit? Um, I think whenever someone makes contact with it again and he can get another thing, he uh, like looks down to Pip and then holds a little pebble in his hand and is like, Oh, I know how these work. And he like holds it between his index and his thumb and just like, Flicks it with his thumb, <laughs> and the magic stone just you know fucking jettisons and from his hand. Pip because chuckles it's because stuff. it's no longer magical. <laughs> That's right. Oh, he like flicks his thumb, and the rock just goes like a foot, <laughs> just gonna <laughs> pink on the ground. <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, I... yep. That's that's Pip's contribution. <laughs> nice. I feel like after seeing the last attack that targeted me, I kind of like cowered behind my shield a little bit and just. Raised my stick up and was waiting for my moment to strike again, and then just kind of missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka? Uh, Tekka does a quick oh, red swing with his uh, quarter staff. Yeah, the two of you, you and Brooke, can't see one another, so you sort of coordinate the final blow. Uh, and together you, you, you s a strike from above onto this thing, which just disperses like smoke into the air. The two of you no longer see anything in front of the door. Combat's over. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> nice. Ah. Pip goes, get his, oh. goes to get his rocks. <laughs> <laughs> puts them back in his pouch. Well done. Both down. We should be able to move through that oh. door now. Or are they defeated? They're done. Uh, uh, wonderful. It's, it's wonderful news. Uh, How are you doing over there, friends? We are well. How are you, Brooke? Uh, I've seen worse, but I definitely have been hit. Uh, are we going to proceed on this side of, I don't know, world? I'll be remiss to leave your bodies unattended. That is true. We could just try to take a peek before we... Uh... Oh. Uh, Tekka, may I, may I take the book for a moment? Please. Uh, we made it. Thank you for your uh, instruction. I'll walk over to, uh, to Pontifex and let him read along with me. Oh, of, of course. I uh, when you walk we're not prepared that... to handle. Oh. Mm. Can, you, can you repeat? Uh, Pontifex? Oh, it, it, it is it is nothing. It's just saying that there's nothing that we weren't prepared to handle. Ah, okay. Um, Mr. Fleetfoot, when you walked through that door, which world were you in? Huh. Well, were you asleep at the time, or... Alright. Tekka will attempt to grab the handle of the door. Okay. Um, Tekka, you push the door, uh, you pull the door open. Uh, all of you in uh, awake or sleeping see the door opening. Uh, Tekka, it's heavy. You have to put, like plant your feet into the ground to pull it open. Uh, and you can feel it, like, sort of resisting you a little bit. You know that if you were to let go of it, it would close. Tekka puts, like, himself, his body between the door and uh, the wall, the corner, and kind of, like, pushes with his legs to keep it open. I don't suppose that's one of you in there. I can open the door from here, but it is heavy. Alright, I'll try to help him. 
Uh, similarly, the the door puts up some resistance. You pull you pull it open for you. It's quite easy. Uh, yeah. Easily overpowered at the door, but again, same thing. You can feel that it's pulling back, so if you were to let go, it would close. Well, let's... I'll walk over there and take a peek. Uh, Do you similarly? two see anything down here that I can't? Sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, that applies to all of you. You can see a staircase leading down and, and then taking oh. a left. I believe that uh, we must wake you. Yeah. I don't know if you were to go on in this way. I would rather not leave my body behind. Yes, I agree. Worst uh, comes to worst, there's probably another bed down there. Perhaps right? we can bring you back. It seems the bed isn't even necessary. Pontifex is going to walk over and like uncork his water skin and like splash their face a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um... <coughs> that is not sufficient to wake either of them up. Oh. Uh, although the two of you oh. do feel the sensation of water on your face. <laughs> what? What is happening? What is happening? I assume I, that that would wake you. Uh, <laughs> uh, However, you woke yourselves up last time, or Teka. <clears throat> I. I joined my other form asleep. Brook starts oh. walking. Well, I suppose do that then. Could someone hold the door? Oh, that is true. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, I'll okay. hold it. I'm. Uh, Brook is. Uh, Brooke, you, you touch your body and you feel yourself just being back laying down on the bed and you pull yourself up and you're awake. Uh, Talix, you can't touch the door. Your fingers go through it. Oh. Oh, no. I think one of us is going to have to be left behind. I can do it. I can hold it open for Sometime. Is there Unless some way you can prop you it open? Is there a mechanism you can break? Okay, you Most... take a brief look around. Uh, um, besides the fact that the door seems to close itself, there isn't really anything special about it. Can Pip just put his hand through the door? Yeah. He goes through. Can he walk through the door? As long as uh, Tekka is holding it open, yes. Ah. Oh. But the door itself is still solid. Um, alright. Here's how it's gonna work. Uh, if you... You're gonna meet resistance where the wall is. As if the door was closed. If mm. the door is closed. When the door is held open, there is no such resistance anywhere. Oh, wait. Can we just take his body? That is a good point. If water did not wake him, perhaps waking is purely voluntary. Well, I mean, if it's on the other side, he can just join us there. Right. So perhaps one of you could carry him. It's a good plan. I can do it. Well, I will see you on the other side. Uh, with permission, uh, Tekka. Anything, just do it. Soon. Talix has the book, right? Oh, I can hand it to you. Yeah, Pontifex will take the book to free up your hands. And yeah, okay. sure. He will make his way through the door. And I put my shield back on my backpack and put my orb back in my pouch and do the whole routine. <laughs> like a minute. And then I, uh, I'll scoop up Tekka. I think he seems kind of small. Probably lift him. Yeah, I imagine, I imagine Gary. Yeah, you are able to uh, lift the body of Tekka. I would hold out my sword still, and it is now shining a light so I can actually see 20 feet from me. Alright, I'm gonna walk through. 
Okay. Tell us to carry the body of Tekka through the entryway. Uh, you join up with Pontifex. Ippenbrook, you make your way through as well. We'll gingerly set him down in the staircase. Uh, okay, Tekka, Tekka, can you... You can either slip through the door while you hold it open and close it behind you, or you can stay on this side. Yeah, I think Tekka is slowly, like, moving his form uh, within the door frame, and he's, he feels his, like, feet slipping from the weight. He's just not able to stare, carry it any longer. And with a clang, it closes behind us. The rest of you only see, merely see the door uh, closing behind you. And uh, Tekka, you yourself, you don't really see any of the others, you just feel alone in here and we're going to continue from here uh next sunday oh man, oh, man. Oh, it begins oh man dungeon crawling right off the bat puzzles oh yes we found jamuel puzzles Success. yeah yeah <laughs> we find jamuel? this is we found him exactly as we had expected yeah Call Jamil. Campaign ended. <laughs> <laughs> what if this is his dog all along? <gasps> oh! You ruined like, the whole campaign. You solved like the in Ghost Trick. <laughs> yes. Played that game. <laughs> I play that uh, game. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is a good game. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of like the very end of the game, isn't it? You can Whoops. censor that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, it's a very old game. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> Same. I think it's on smartphones. So, yeah, people can still oh, play it today. Oh, it is! I'm just looking at a wiki right now. We found the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria in the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. We you found sure did. the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. I know all the text that we needed to know. Oh, gee. Man, I wonder what that means for my pre order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Refund. You might see if you can get a refund. Yeah. Who kidding? I, mean, I don't know. I, I used the coupon. I used the coupon <laughs> pre order, so hopefully it's still refundable. Doesn't no matter how much you you trust the developer, you know they are all equally susceptible to getting sucked into a book. I was into it for the pre-order <laughs> bonus. <laughs> I was supposed to get Wait. a Jamuel Fleetfoot skin in the process. Were we supposed to tell you that we wanted to pre-order it? <laughs> well, no, that if we wanted yeah, you, to, because if just... not, I don't have a pre-order. Yeah, <laughs> I spent so all okay, my money. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, I literally had the exact amount of currency required for the pre-order, so Pontifex does not have a single copper to his yeah. name. It's yeah. gonna be 35 gold for, for the book, and with a particular coupon from the thing, it was gonna be 5% off, and he had, like, exactly the right amount. I had amount. exactly 33 gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Right in hindsight, good. I'm not mad that I didn't pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad one of us did, though. That was a good, a good joke. Good bit. I hope, I hope you all had fun. Yes, yeah. yes. you did an excellent job. I'm, I'm so living for this. I'm not even self-conscious about my bad Irish accents. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It was, it was noticeably Irish. Good. But you got that's, that part. That's what I was. Going... <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> all right. Calling for stereotypically Irish. I'm hyped. I seem to have broken the script that's supposed to clear the table. Uh, well, but uh, it's a besides good thing that, it broke now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And not earlier. Uh, well, I was really glad to have you here. And uh, um. Oh yeah, it's completely broken. Whoops. That's alright though. Uh, I'm excited. Excited for Yeah. Me? I'm sure very curious. Fun. The fate of Jamio Fleetfoot, we are to discover. What will we find at the bottom of that dungeon? Probably, Probably another one of these rooms. <laughs> <laughs> More rocks, please. <laughs> <laughs> More rocks. And what the hell is Pip Steel? Perhaps rocks. give me a working one next time. <sighs> 
All right, well, we made it. We Thank actually you again. started the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's finally happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. You're so saying much. finally. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Well, uh, thank you for being your wonderful selves. I am. Yeah, uh, thank you for running can't this. Can't wait to see mm -hmm. you again next Sunday. And thanks to anyone else who's still hanging out in the stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Mostly All you guys. Our yep. <laughs> <laughs> Artificially raising up my numbers. We do what we gotta do. <laughs> Lesson. That's what every professional does. All right. Ah, uh, I'll let you go. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Goodbye, <laughs> viewers. Bye, friends. Have a good one. Everyone. This is fun. Bye. We'll see you all in a week and probably talk to you before then. Oh, for sure. Have a good one. Bye. See ya. See you all uh -huh. on the scores.